Hey everybody, T1 Glistener Elf here with T1 Snowflake Mystic. Hi, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think this is the first time that people have seen this setup with the the green screen with the chroma key turned off. This is what it looks like over here. Ta-da! I can't get too close to her right now because both our mics are on, and you will hear both of us at the same time. That'll be that'll be great. That'll be swell. Fun. Uh, wait a second, sneeze. Gotta sneeze. <laughs> there we go. We're good. <laughs> hey, good. Hey, what's up? What's up, Comet? What's up, Glaceon? <laughs> I'm doing all right, Glaceon. How are you doing? <laughs> Comet, we've we've done a little bit of magic. It's been a while, but she we have a, a game of her uh, playing on Arena versus Sparky, but still she played. She knows that she knows the rules. <laughs> All right, Not we're gonna... anymore, I don't. Yeah, it has been a hot... Well, I'm the only person you get to play with, so that, that does make sense. And if we're doing other things instead, that, that'll do it. Yeah. All right. I so... think this is my first time ever playing Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm pretty sure... It you, is. You said you've seen the show oh, with them, and you, I know your uncle, not, not Jared, but Aaron, is big into it. He still has some of my cards. I'm never getting those cards back, <laughs> in all likelihood. But uh, yeah, so yeah, so, what what you forget everything you learned in the show because famously or infamously, the show breaks the rules like basically all the time. So the, the, the about the only thing they get right is pot of greed. Even the amount of life each person starts out with is not right in the show. So even about the cards, a lot of the cards they get wrong. So Dark Magician doesn't actually have a magic attack and Wait, what? Uh, okay, they got Exodia right, to be fair. To be fair. They did get Exodia right. It's kinda hard to mess that one up though, I think. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Although she doesn't know what Exodia is yet. I will show nope. you. That's in my big box of everything over here. Hey. Yeah. Alright, but we're going to start off with some very simple so these are all cards that do not have an effect. I ended up picking up some cards for uh, something called Goats Format. These are just some, some de easy ones to get you started with. So here Yay. we go. I'm actually even going to set the, the order for them. I'm going to make mine shiny. No. <laughs> no, maybe not. Um, no. Hmm. Let's see. Let's start this 1,000. Here we go. Let's do... Start off with this one. And... How we, what, I'm trying to figure out the order that I'm going to do this with. Then this one. I promise I have a reason. Let's see. Teach you, teach you the order that these get played in. I wish I had picked up another battle footballer, but why would why would I ever need another battle footballer? Who would need something silly like that? Yes, that would actually be handy right about now. Okay. So something like this. Battle footballer. Yep. There's an order. You'll you'll be playing them from le to sort of teach you. You'll be playing them from left to right. Um. Hmm. Eeny meeny miny. Let's do this one next. No wait, that's for me. We'll do this one next. <laughs> and then. Yeah, I don't like know. a. a uh, Here we are. And then Ugh. you. Okay, so let's get started. Battle Football is one of my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Yeah, I, I do actually like it. And it does have its place in GOATS. It's a four-star 2100 defense. I think we actually talked about that last time, didn't we? If I'm not mistaken. All right, so we're going to start off. No, uh, we can make this work either way. Uh, n pretend you have, right now you don't have a deck which for you would be over here. You don't have, this is your discard pile, which in this game is called the graveyard. You don't have that yet. We'll get there. You don't have to worry about anything else here. What, what you need to see is that right up here, you have five monster zones. You remember how when we were, one of which is behind Yugi's big hair? <laughs> <laughs> and Joey's. <laughs> Do you remember when we were playing Magic, was there a limit on how many how many creatures you could put out in magic? I don't 
remember. Well, n there isn't. I don't know if we ever got to an especially high number with you, but there's not a limit. You could theoretically have one million... She doesn't get that. <laughs> one million little bird tokens or bird creatures on the field. Your little what? flying deck. Uh, but in Yu-Gi-Oh, there is actually a hard limit. You could only have one, two, three, three four, four, five... five. Six, seven. We're, we're going to ignore these. They're invisible zones here and here. We're going to ignore those for now. That's that's way, way later when we'll get to those. But normally, you get one, two, three, four, five. Yes. Copyright. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> one behind his wig. I mean, uh, no, that's totally... Is that scary. a wig? I don't know. How else would you explain? <laughs> oh, dear. So, when you want to play a monster... You put them into one of these zones, and for right now, I'm going to keep it very, very simple. If you want to attack with one of your monsters, you'll need to place it face up, like this. So, here's your hand. I, I put them in the order for you to play them. So, if you'll play one of yours first. Um. Right there is fine. Uh, no, no, did I put them backwards? No. There we okay. go. Yep. And there are very few cases where it actually matters what zone you put it in. Usually, you just do whatever. We'll get into where it matters later on, because it actually matters for these little invisible zones over here. But for right now, anyway, I'm just learning the game. Yes, yes, for right now. In fact, that's probably a little bit easier. So, Battle Footballer, for all you folks, all you need to know right now is that it makes it shows off the fact that my camera can't focus <laughs> there we go close enough not in the real game no it has it's... 1000 attack and that's all you need to know right now okay so that's comes my turn i'll draw my invisible card over here <laughs> and i have another monster this one is called aqua Mador. what you need to see on here is look at its attack what number is that? Not 200. Wait, no. 1,200. There you go. 1,200. Which I is didn't see the bigger, one. it turns out, than 1,000. It's only 200 more. It's only 200 more, but because it's bigger, it runs into the footballer and knocks it out of the way. When you lose one of your monsters, it goes into your graveyard. Oh, no. So if it, an attack position monster attacks another attack position monster, whichever one has the higher attack ends up winning. The other one goes into the discard pile. The, in this case, graveyard. Yep, they call it the graveyard in this. You would normally take 200 points of damage here, but we're going to ignore that for right now. So now it's your turn. If you'll play the next card, please. Me. Hey, it looks like you have an Aquamador as well. So naturally, they're going to have the same attack, right? Yes. What do you think will happen if they attack each other and they tie? Um, nothing? Not nothing. They both go and Yep, discard? they would both go. So for right now, we'll just pretend that that's what goes on as well. Right over here. I have two. So now it's my turn. Alright. I'll play. This one's called a Giant Soldier of Stone. It has 1,300 attack. Now oh. you don't have a monster. If I attack you, there's no monster to stop it, so all of that goes straight to your life points. Whatever number you, it was, it's now reduced by the whole attack. So it's usually you want to make sure you have something to protect you so that you don't eat a big attack. Well, I don't know that that's a big attack, but you get the idea. So now it's your turn, and nothing happens to mine afterwards. See. Now that one is... Nineteen thousand. Uh, Nineteen. Well, no, not nineteen thousand. You're missing 19, a zero. There. We we say one thousand nine hundred or nineteen hundred. They mean the same thing. Yep. <laughs> All right. And in, in Yu-Gi-Oh, it kind of makes sense to say. I mean, the digits after that usually don't matter. So usually, the only the first two digits of the attack matter. Usually. Anyway, is yours bigger or is mine bigger? I think mine is bigger. Well, here, take a look, just to make sure. Mine's 
Mine is bigger. Do you see by how much? You could do it. Six. Six. Six hundred. Yeah, six hundred. There we go. So yours would run mine over, and mine would, I would, there it goes. I would take six hundred points. So once again, just to reinforce the lesson for you, when an attack monster beats an attack monster, you see what happens? Yeah. It takes, you... The one that's the higher number wins, knocks the other one out, and then the loser takes that much damage, takes the difference in damage. Now, this one is Blazing Impachi. It's one of the rare cases where that third digit actually matters. It has 1850 attack, and this one, the fire in front of its face, makes it really hard to see, and for some reason it can't see that <laughs> your monster has a higher attack. So if I attack into it, Remember, mine has a lower attack, so what do you think will happen? This... Yep, this, even though mine this, is the one that's attacking, mine will still go into the discard pile here. Because yours has the higher attack number. Yes. Alright. So, now, what happens on your turn? I bring out one. You can, yep. You can bring out, but for right now, let's pretend you can't. Let's pretend you can't for right, for right now, okay? Okay. Just a moment. All right. So, I don't have a monster, which means... Also, YouTube's telling you this stream started a day ago? That's weird. Huh. Okay. Things as well loved all the four of us, too. Someone who knows nothing about Yu-Gi-Oh! I just sit here and say, hey, it's okay. We're all, we're all going to learn this together. So, Evangeline, since I don't have any monster, what can you do? I can't bring this out. Pretend you can, but pretend, pretend that you, that's not an option for just a moment. Let's just keep it simple and look at what you already have. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Remember what I did when you didn't have a monster? You can speak up. You can speak no. up. No. You don't? What did I do when I had a monster and you did not have a monster? Remember when I had Giant Soldier of Stone out and you. You didn't have a monster? What did I do? Come on. I'm trying to make it as clear as I can. Move it. Sorry? Move. No, no, not move. <laughs> I had a monster and you you're cutting you're you're doing that thing where you scratch stuff just when you're thinking and you're actually scratching the top of the card. <laughs> it's that nervous habit you have. People do stuff like that when they're thinking. Some people fidget with their fingers, some people do it with their toes. Some people bite their lips. That's just what you do. Alright, so I had a monster. If you had a monster, I could attack your monster. But if you don't have a monster, then what? Give her a second. She'll figure it out. Hey! I don't know how to say your name from Russia. Oh, this is my daughter. This is my eight-year-old. <laughs> you had a Game Boy Yu-Gi-Oh! game where the field effects gave percentage-based buffs. <laughs> I, I never knew that that's how those worked. I do know that... Um, let's see. The only Yu-Gi-Oh! video game I think I've ever played, if I remember correctly played it straight, did all the normal rules correctly, but the one that I have for Xbox over there, that one's weird. That one lets you fuse monsters in your hand without polymerization, and it makes just random stuff. 
Oh, wait, there's a PlayStation 1 that does the same thing. No, wait, maybe that is the updated version of the PlayStation 1. It, it's the one that's famous for its silly long speedruns, where the world record is 10 hours or some odd. It's, it's, no, wait a minute. Nah, never mind, just a sec. All right. So if, if I'm attacking you, Evangeline, I actually, I just gave the answer away. If you don't have a monster, and I, normally if you did have a monster, I would attack the monster, like what happened earlier. But if you don't have a monster, then what happens? Attack. Attack. Hmm? Yes, you. Well, so now... Attack you? Yep. And how much would you do? How much damage would you do? Stop scratching the card. All Yu-Gi-Oh cards have a little sticker on the bottom right, and bless her heart, she's about to tear that sticker right off. How much damage would that do? And look at it. What's its attack? 1900? Yep, 1900. And if you're not from the U.S., in Europe you say, uh, you say 1900, right? Is that how that works? Or you always say 1900? I think? And here in the U.S. we usually say 1900. All right, so if I don't have a monster, how much of that 1900 attack is going through to me? What's 1900 minus zero? 1900? Yep. Why is it zero? Because um. unlike this situation, where I have a monster, and you have to actually subtract. In this case, I don't have a monster to stop it. There's nothing stopping it, so it's all of the attack gets to go through. Because there's nothing stopping it. Yep, that's right. Whereas, if I had this out and you attacked, that's 1,200 attack. So in, in that case, how much would go through? 1900 minus 1200. <laughs> you could do this. Part of the reason I was sure she could she could do this now is because she was showing off her subtraction in the car. So, <laughs> as you can see, that is kind of important for something like this. Do you see what... Ignore the last zeros on the end. What's 19 minus 12? That's a lot easier when you can take those zeros out. It's less, fewer numbers to keep track of. 19. Not 17. <laughs> 19 minus 12. I know what your brain did there. Sixteen? No, it's not what? sixteen! <laughs> Silly. What's nineteen minus twelve? You got this. Makes it easier, right? I mean, you can just see the numbers on top of one another. Oh, that's right. That's where the other one ran off to. While she's thinking about 19 minus 12, everything tramples in Yu-Gi-Oh. Yes, uh, there is an equivalent to trample in Yu-Gi-Oh. We haven't gotten to just yet. She and I haven't gotten to it just yet. 
Uh, you've activated my trap card, now Exodia. <laughs> Exodia doesn't use the stack. Which in this game, it's called the chain. The, the stack and the chain are the same thing, except that in Magic, at any point during the stack, you can stop and start rebuilding it, you can keep going into it, but once the chain starts resolving in Yu-Gi-Oh, you can't stop it. Yeah, so... There you go. <laughs> That's unfortunate. It is one of the things that gives the game a little bit less depth, um, but that's actually important for balance reasons because there are spells that care about how high they are in the chain and if you had that multiple times you could, if you could keep interrupting it would get it would make those spells a lot better those spells and traps I should say a lot better still having a hard time you were I, you were close the first time and you you got to doubting yourself all right what's nine minus two Seven. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So what is 19 minus 12? Seven? Yep. Yep. <laughs> you see how that works? Because you're taking... It starts 10 higher, but you're also taking 10 off when you do that. So you end up getting the same result. <laughs> so in this case, I would have to figure out what order I had these in. Ah, there we are. Something like that, <laughs> and then, Oops. and then you would hit Drop me for 1900. Them. Yep. Okay. So, uh oh, though, I have an even bigger monster. I have a gene warped warwolf, and this one has 200. Not 200. 2000. 2000. 2000 attack, which is bigger than 1900. Yep. In fact, it's bigger by 100. So I'm going to run over your monster. I'm going to hey. run it over really quickly. Hey. And then you would take... You would take the 2,000 minus 1,900, which is... We just talked about it. It's 100. 100. Okay. So you have one more monster. There's something you haven't we haven't done yet. So far, we've only been putting the monsters in what's called face up, which is, this is face down, this is face up, attack position, which is like this. There's something called defense position, which is like this. They have their, they are turned sideways to show that instead of using this first number, you actually use the second number. Pay attention. I see you. <laughs> I see you. Instead of using the first number, you use the second number, Evangeline. Now, obviously in this case, this would be a really bad idea because this has 2,000 attack, and 100 defense. One of these things is way, way bigger than the other. So for this monster, it makes a lot of sense for it to stay in attack position. Yes. However, you have a monster with 800 attack and 2,000 defense. So it's the opposite. For this one, it makes sense to have it in defense position. In Yu-Gi-Oh, though, you can't usually, with very few exceptions, you can't just put them into face-up defense position. You have to put them in face-down defense position. So if you summon a monster, in the vast majority of cases, it's either face-up attack position, which shows what it is and you use the attack number, or it's face-down defense position. Now, its defense number still matters, but I don't know what it is now, because I can't see it. Play a little hidden information. I All don't right. <laughs> remember. All right, you ready? So yes. You have a monster, and you don't want it to get killed. So what do you do? All right. And can you tell me what you just did? Put. Come on, can you tell me what you just did to it? Face, Try to get you to say it so you can remember it better. Face down position. Yep. Well, close. Face down defense position. Face down, face down. so you're seeing the back of the card. The face, <laughs> this is the face, is down. Defense position is turned sideways like this. Shows that it's defending instead of attacking. Makes sense, right? Yes. Okay. So now it comes to my turn. Rar. I'm going to try to knock into yours. So what'll happen is, if you attack a face-down monster, 
it flips face up. It doesn't flip into attack position. It flips face up. So now I can see it. Now I know what it is. And funny thing, look at the attack of mine and the defense of yours. They're the same number. They're the same number. Now when two monsters have the same attack value, they both die. But when one of them is in defense position, it bounces off. Nothing happens. Both of them get to stick around. Yay! <laughs> now, let's suppose for the sake of argument that we did this instead. Let's say that you put your Archfiend soldier. Can you read its defense? Uh, 1,500? Yep. And I attacked this one instead. Remember, I still have 2,000. Uh-oh. That's 1,500, and yours has... Um... 20,000. Not 20,000. That's a lot of zeros for a little kid. 2,000. <laughs> 2,000, yep. So, what's the difference between those? What's 2,000 minus 1,500? What's 20 minus 15? Give her a second. Twenty minus fifteen. She already learned elves. Strong but certain leader ruined everything. USSR anthem. Oh, did you teach your ancient. Oh dear goodness, I missed a whole bunch of stuff up there. Oh dear goodness. Second name of Professor Tolkien. Quick maths, little lady, do them quick maths. She'll get there. The more she practices, Evelyn, the better she'll get at it. It's it's tough. <laughs> Oh dear. 12 is 12. 20 is 20. English is weird. Yeah, go figure. English is weird, indeed. Um, getting... What? What is it? Uh, the, we were influenced by the decimal system for a little while. <laughs> Only Is YouTube glitch? Live doesn't show up in subscribe tab or your channel? It says this stream... Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. It's, it's being weird. Do you... 20 minus 15, Evangeline. Just tell me when you have the answer. In the meantime, I'm going to check chat. Teacher, <laughs> teacher, ancient Greek. Oh dear goodness. Unbreakable freedom. Sometimes you have to ask yourself, what would Stalin do? And the answer inevitably is he purge. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, Knight. You're not, absolutely not wrong. That is, I, that is, I suppose, how that works. She's looking at me like she hasn't already done much harder numbers before. Come on, hold on, hold on. I see, I see what's going on. Evangeline, what's 20 minus 15? The attack minus the defense. Just think about it. Do it in your head. <laughs> in the meantime, I'm going to get the next one set up really quickly. I can find it. Where are you? Actually, this might be convenient. It gives me some time to sort through the cards. Come on, Evangeline. What's 20 minus 15? I don't have any of that card. That Two, would be why. Five. Five, yes. <laughs> See, so what is 2,000 minus 1,500? Or 2,000 minus 1,500? minus 100? No, 2,000 minus 1,500. My attack versus this one's defense. See? 2,000 
minus 1,500. You just had the answer. What's 20 minus 15? 5. So what's 2,000 minus 1,500? 5. 5. 100. 100. Yep. There you go. So you just give her a second, she'll get it. Or a minute. <laughs> or a long minute. All right, but this was this was a hypothetical one. Yeah. So we still have this position. And suddenly, this card finds itself in your hand. Let's say you drew that for the, for the turn. All right. We're going to teach you about effect monsters. So far, Evangeline, none of these cards have any sorts of effects at all. All that we care about for these is just the numbers. And these two are in a bit of a stalemate. This one can't get over this one, but this one obviously can't switch to attack because then it's still too small. Oh, and by the way, that's another thing I should mention. Uh, your, your cards, when it's your turn, you can switch them from attack to defense, or from defense to attack, or attack to defense. But unless the card says otherwise, you can only do once per turn. So, if I could switch this one to defense, I couldn't then switch it to attack later on. I only get one per turn. Yes. Um, but let's say that you these two are having a stalemate. So, you look at that one's uh, attack. That's called Old Vindictive Magician. What's its attack? Please stop scratching the card. 450. You're doing that thing where you get really quiet when you're not so sure of yourself. 450. Yeah, 450. Obviously, that is slightly smaller than... That's slightly smaller than... 2,000. Yep. yep. So instead, how do you want to... You can't put that in face-up attack position, so instead you put it in... Face-down defense. Face-down defense position, yep. Yes. Here, I'm going to turn her microphone up, because she's doing that thing where she gets super, super quiet when she doesn't think she knows the answer, or when she's doubting herself. Super, super quiet. So, okay, I'm, I'm getting, it's my turn now, and if I just attack this one, nothing will happen again. Well, at least I have a shot at doing it with, when I get this one, so I'll attack it. This and turn this. Okay, yep. So this one has... 600... 600... Defense yes. points. So a couple things to note here. Remember I said that when they're in attack position, the difference goes to the defenders, goes to the one with the lower life points? So this one's 2,000, this one's 800. The difference is 1,200, so if I did this attack, you would take 1,200. That's not what goes on in defense position. In defense position, it doesn't matter if this one is a billion points higher. It doesn't transfer over to you. It kills the monster. It overkills the monster. It slams a building into the monster. <laughs> but it won't actually hurt you. There is an exception called piercing damage, but we'll, we'll get to that much later. But another thing to note is that this one actually has an effect. Spell a cast. Yep. Oh, no, no, not that part. The part below it. It says, flip. flip. Target one monster on your, your opponent controls. Destroy that target. So flip can be done in one a couple ways. One is, remember I said that you can swap them on your turn? You can do it once per turn. You could flip it up on your own and get it, or I could do it for you by attacking the monster. Whenever you attack it, we have to see what its defense is, so that you have to flip it up. Uh-oh, I just flipped it. And now you get to use the effect. Well, target one monster your opponent controls, destroy that target. So it do that Yep. Even though your monster still dies because my attack is higher than it, yours says if I go down I'm taking you with me. And it hits mine as well. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> the name is very appropriate. Old Vindictive Magician. Center Klaus is, <laughs> is having some issues here. Eight, oh yeah, 8YO is 8 year old. Oh did we not say? Oh yeah, much earlier I, I, I answered that with this is my daughter. This is my 8 year old. <laughs> my eight by sorry. She's like, yeah, that is progress. Oh my god, is that evolving Pokemon sounds? <laughs> we're getting there. Slowly but surely, we're getting there. Um, but you English guys mean is that, yes, this is my kid. That That is my kid. <laughs> Alright, so now, I don't have a monster. 
if you want to start attacking me with your mystical elf, what do you do? Remember, you can't attack with it in defense position. So, but... Yep. And what's that doing? It's making it to where I can use my attack points. Right. Okay. And then, now what? Wait. Now what do you do? Come on, you can do it. Wait. Get you? Yeah, you attack me. So how much damage would that do? <laughs> <laughs> don't focus, Evangeline. Don't let random noises distract you. How much damage would that do? 800. 800, yep. Because there's nothing stopping me. Yep. It's 800 minus 0. So it would be 800. Yep. Now, let's say I'm going to have my cake and eat it too. On my <laughs> turn, I put this one face down. Face down defense position. And then I end yes. my turn. Now, it's your turn. Let's pretend you you didn't draw anything you could use. Now what what can you do? I could hit it. You could attack it. You would what eventually? And then you would flip that off. Well, you would you would do what? I would attack your card. Yep. And, and then, then you would flip it over. Okay. Uh oh. So this one has 2,000 defense, which is higher than your 800 attack. Oh, no. So what's, what's the difference? It's 2,000 minus 800. What's 20 minus 8? Come on, Evangel, it was 20 minus 8. 12? You're doing that thing where you're really quiet when you're not sure of yourself. 12? Speak up. 12. Speak up. 12. That's barely speaking up. Really itty bitty quiet. Normal voice. 12. There you go, close enough. We're not getting her to talk normally. I don't think that's going to happen. 12. So yeah. Okay, that's better. So you would take. 12, and then two zeros on the end. You would take 1,200 points of damage, but now your monster doesn't go away. Why? Do you know why? No. Even though your monster attacked and had lower attack than my defense, so you took a bit of damage, it didn't make your monster go away. Why is that? Because that's in defense. That's in defense position, yep. This My monster in defense position can't take out one of your monsters in attack position. So if you attack into it, you may take damage, but you'll still get to keep your monster as a result. Yes. Alright. Now we get into some silly stuff. Now we get oh, into some no. really silly stuff. <laughs> Alright. Oh, no. <laughs> now... Just for the sake of explanation, there's... Alright, I'm not sure... We're, we're probably going to have to review attacking again, because I, I'm not sure that she gets it just yet. I'm hoping so, and this is one of the more basic concepts, but if we need to, we'll come back and revisit it. Um, so what I haven't explained to you so far, Evangeline, is that in this game, there's what's called a normal summon. A normal summon is basically a rule in the game that says that you can put a card, a monster, onto the field one time per turn. The, there are exceptions called special summons. Special summons will actually say on the card how you can special summon them. They, they get to be exceptions. But if you don't see a card that says something like that, if you don't see a card that lets you special summon, you can only do one normal summon 
or set. Normal summon is face up attack position. Set is face down defense position. You can only do one of those two, not both, one time per turn. Now, you'll notice that on our cards, they have stars. Do you know what those stars are for? No. Yeah, the, the TV show doesn't exactly get this right, as Kaiba summons three blue eyes white dragons on the first turn for absolutely no reason. <laughs> that's, that's not exactly how that works. So, anything from one star to four stars, Evangeline, you can play straight away on its own. If it has five or six stars, like this one has six stars, oh, wow. you have to do what's called a tribute summon. You have to get rid of one monster from the field, goes into your discard pile, careful about knocking the board, and then you get to summon it. Just like before, you can either you know, face up attack or face down defense. You can normal summon or set. But for five or six, you need at least one monster, no, not at least, you need one monster in order to get it to come out. Now that's a pretty expensive cost, but the trade-off is that these tend to be stronger. So you're giving up a weaker monster in exchange for a stronger one. That's called a tribute summon. On your side, if you had gotten rid of Mystical Elf, it would be the same result. It would be basically, yep, yeah, basically the same thing. Alright. But it, so this is, that's one way that you can try to get a monster to stick around. Let it have a really high defense, and then you can tribute it for a bigger monster. <laughs> that hasn't been very effective since 2005, but we'll go with that. <laughs> we'll say that's a thing. Alright, now obviously mine has a way, 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 way bigger attack value than yours. Yes, I am if 800. Yeah. This yeah. is 2,500. Now, let's pretend, for the sake of argument, uh. that you had two monsters like that. Actually, this is a bad example, because despite costing two uh, summons, Gaia the Fierce Knight is actually weaker than Summon Skull. That's a that's a really bad example. Let me see if I can find an actual decent one. Where is Blue Eyes? Do I not have any copies of Blue Eyes in here? I don't. <laughs> Kaiba is not my main man, apparently. Uh, any oh, no. Mo. I'm getting one for you. This should be an, the opposite of an oh no. <laughs> We're still getting, we're still doing the basics. The bare necessities. <laughs> or something like that, anyway. Eeny, meeny, miny, not you. <laughs> I'm glad you're having fun with this. It's probably really loud for the people since you turned it up a lot. I, I, I did. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Sorry. Sorry about that. Oops. That's a good one, too. Where, do I have anything in here? Wait a minute, I have the one that gets out Blue Eyes White Dragon, and I don't have Blue Eyes White Dragon. Something, something's wrong here. We're missing something. Um, where's the creator? There's... nope. Uh, hmm. Maybe it's over in the actual deck itself. That would, that would do it. Um... Trying to see if I can find. I had a. I made a bad choice picking Summon Skull because it turns out that's bigger than basically anything else that I have left. Go figure. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. Maybe I do have blue eyes. Maybe it's in here. Maybe it's in with all of you. Maybe. Hopefully. Bird face. <laughs> Cannonball spear shellfish. Bird face is a really weird name. But. But okay. <laughs> right. It sounds like bird an insult. Face. You bird face. <laughs> no right. insults there. <laughs> We're going to pretend that this works. All right. <laughs> this one. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm going to switch out Summon Skull because that's, that's too big for this example. Um, sure. Gaia the Fierce Knight. It's actually smaller. So that works. We'll, we'll pretend that that works. So. Thunder Nyan Nyan. Yes, there's a cat girl in here. We have Nanners has invaded the deck. Right. <laughs> Yay! Uh, Me. Forget the Aquaman door. <laughs> okay. Let's pretend that your mystical elf got tributed. Let's see, that was my Aquaman door. So you tribute it. Here, I'm going to actually let you go through the motion here. 
So, you have that in your hand. You have your mystical elf still on the field. So how do you get out Mr. Monarch over here? I would take that one, put it in the discard pile, mm -hmm. and then put this where was, where Mr. Coelph was. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Now, some times cards have effects <coughs> that activate, like the, the flip effects. You saw what that is. That activates when they flip. Sometimes they have effects when they're normal summoned, special summoned, or tribute summoned. And this one actually does have an effect. Now it doesn't matter because I don't have any cards in my hand, but when this card is tribute summoned, so when it's tribute summoned, right then, you would actually do something. You would. This one is nice because it lets you take a card out of my hand. But notice that your attack is actually... How much is it bigger by? You can do it. 100. 100. Hey, there you go, bird face, as opposed to Dr. Beard face from Scrubs. It's a beard face! <laughs> oh, goodness. It's okay, we all have... Bird face. We're all Evangeline stands. Hey, you better all be Evangeline stands. <laughs> oh, my brother always called it man-eater bug woman. <laughs> right? That's exactly I never used to. Oh dear, she's eight year old. Usually, when someone says my eight year old or ten year old, they're saying this. Okay, yeah, and YouTube also has a limit on not just how many characters you get in your title, but how many characters before it cuts the rest off with an ellipsis. So that also is a reason for shortening it. Uh, if monster front off free space, if it, is it goes in face? Yeah, if there's not a monster to block it, it just goes straight to the face. You won't. Oh yeah, she can't read that, Evelyn. But that is. Uh, that is a thing we, we do have to... I'm not going to talk too much about that on camera. Never mind. I was waiting for that. There we go. <laughs> Alright, so yours is bigger by 100 points. And so if it attacked into mine, mine would go away. And I would lose 100 points. I also would have lo lost, effectively, lost the monsters that I used to get this one out. Although they're stronger, tribute monsters have a lot more cost that comes along with them because if you lose them it's kind of like you lost all the stuff you built into them as well. That's what makes them kind of tricky. Kind of tricky to play. Okay, so now Evangeline has this really, really big monster on the field. Oh no, what am I going to do? <laughs> this is going to be really, really tough. I'm going to have to figure something out you know, or else I'm in trouble. You I'm know in... more than I do about Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> well, I'm, going, I'm reaching into the deck to make stuff happen. To uh, pull stuff out really quickly. I had an order for the first bit and then now we're just improvising it. Okay. <laughs> so, it is very unlikely, especially without a tribute, that I'm going to be able to get a monster out that can do really anything to the Stalas. Moreover, the only monster I have in my hand requires a tribute summon, so I can't just put it straight on the field. I would need a tribute, and uh-oh, I don't have one. So, what am I going to do? Well, this is where spell cards come into play. Spell cards are cards that you play from your hand, you read the instructions on it, and then you do what it says. And that's basically it. There's a whole host of different kinds of spell cards, and there's a lot from which you can pick when you're making your deck. This one says, discard one card from your hand. Oh look, I have another card in my hand. Destroy all face-up monsters on your opponent's side of the field. So if I want to play this, I you remember we've been neglecting these spaces on the bottom. Partially yes. because Joey's blocking one and a half of them with his body, and <laughs> he's blocking three of them <laughs> with his arm. <laughs> and his belt. One, two, three, four. Uh, well, this is the extra deck, but we'll oh. get to that yet. Yep. So, but, but they're there. I promise. You can kind of see them a little bit. Not this one so much. You can see the tip of it right there. All right. But yeah. So we you, don't know what that is. You play a spell card into one of your open spells and traps, and yes, it does have to be open. If all of them are filled up, you can't play any of them. But let's oh. say you know right now they're all open. I play it. And then I do its effect, discard a card, and then it says destroy all the face-up monsters. Yours is face-up.
Just like that. <laughs> well, that's if I take control of it, I suppose. Yay! <laughs> All right. All right. In fact, let's pretend now that I have a monster of my own. Let's say that I have an island turtle. <laughs> island turtle is really, really well. Okay, really, it has two thousand defense. It's it's high enough that it's hard to get over. It's really hard to get over. Um, but you happen to have. Oh, it's in yours, isn't it? <laughs> yep. Yep. There. Actually, that's a bad example. Um, let me find a smaller monster on my part. I have a reason. Let me find a smaller one. Alright, let's see. That's not mass. Okay, here we go. Luster Dragon. Luster Dragon is... Can you read its attack? <laughs> can you turn it over? <laughs> sure, I'll turn it over. 1900? 1900, yep. And it's your turn, and you have a battle footballer. And for some reason, we're not putting it in defense position. I don't know why, but we're, let's pretend. Uh, let's say that the reason is because you have an extra card in your hand. We'll see what it is in a moment. So what's its attack? It's right there, Evangeline. 1,000. You're doing that thing where you get quiet. 1,000? Yep, 1,000. Okay, so which one is bigger? One thousand. Which which of our monsters is bigger? Mine. Evangeline, look at mine. Yours. How much is mine? Nineteen hundred. How much is yours? One thousand. So which one's bigger? Mine. <laughs> no. Yours. No. Yes. Here, instead of saying nineteen hundred. Mine is 1,900. Yours is? 1,000. So which one is bigger? Yours. By how much? Look at them. Evelyn's right. You're not in trouble. Just, just think about it. We're also having a math lesson. We took our homework home. This is genuinely, this was a thing before my parents found out about Yu-Gi-Oh! and thought it was of the devil. This was a, this was a math game for me. I very much enjoyed that. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm the blue eyes by a dragon trio. Senator, we're not, we're not playing, we're not Kaiba. <laughs> oh dear goodness. All right. So how much is Luster Dragon bigger by? So basically, this number minus this number. You can do it. Just look at the first two digits. The one nine and the one zero. The nineteen and the ten. What's nineteen minus ten? No, 19 minus 10 is not 10, Evangeline. I can tell you're nervous because you're doing that with your card. Don't be nervous. Just just relax. What's well, 19 minus 10, Evangeline? 9. 9. There, there you go. See? Okay. And then you just add the extra zeros. 1,900 minus 1,000 is... 900. 900. There you go. So obviously yours is smaller, and it's it's by quite a bit. It doesn't matter if it's one point or a thousand points smaller, though. It'll still lose in combat. But you have a spell card called Limiter Removal. This is a neat little spell card. I'll read it with you, okay? Double the A T K attack. Yep. The machine type monster. Of all machine types monsters. Of all machine type monsters you currently control until the end of this turn during the 
end phase of this turn destroy those monsters. Hey, hey, pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> Okay, her reading's a bit better than her her math, for sure. But that, that was pretty good, Evangeline. So, what that means is that this is a machine type... <laughs> Sandy. This is a machine. See? It even says right there, machine. That means it would have its attack doubled. Alright, little mismultiplication. Well, it's 1,000 times 2. Because doubled means times 2. There's a reason I went with Battle Footballer instead of another machine. I was hoping this particular spot would be easier. 3,000. Not 3,000! <laughs> times 2. Three. What's 1,000 mm. times 2? Evangeline, what is 1,000 times 2? <laughs> When, I, when you actually get the answer, it'll seem really, really obvious. Oh, mm. hey, take care. Take care. By chat and stream. Well, I'll see you next time. Hope you get to hang around with us again. <laughs> At least it's not a meta deck. These traps and goofy stuff. Oh, just you wait, Senator. Just you wait. 20. Senator, no! No! <laughs> no, that's not right. Senator's being silly. All right, what's... 1,000 Evangeline times 2. What's 1 times 2? <laughs> What's 1 times 2? Two? 2. You're doing that thing where you're really quiet when you don't know. 2. Yes, it's 2. 1 times 2 is 2. So what's 1,000 times 2? 2,000. 2,000. There you go. Now, now with its new number, is it bigger than Luster Dragon? No. <laughs> I'm a tea kettle now. <laughs> there we go. 1,000 times 2 is 2,000. Is 2,000 bigger than 1,900? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's 100 bigger. I swear, I know that we're struggling right now, but we actually should play this more, and that'll help her with her math, I'm sure. Just going through these motions should help her out. So if you attacked now, you would finish using the card. I know, Evangeline, I know. I know. You're doing okay, okay? You're doing all right. <laughs> you put this in, and then you would attack, and now yours would actually win out. Right. Rar. Rar. <laughs> you're getting you're getting more of the hang of it. <coughs> we're getting there. We're slowly but surely we're getting there, Evangeline. All right. Now let's see. Let's see. Oh wait. Um. Hmm. Time for another lesson. Here we go. Here we go. We Jay the teacher. This. I'm doing my best. I'm trying anyway. <laughs> Team right. Listener Elf is the teacher of this video. Right. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're really good at doing Mickey's voice. That's, that's Mickey. Thank you. Okay. Mickey Mouse. <laughs> so, I'm going to give... Each of us, actually, let's start off this way. We give each of us a trap card. Take a look, please. It's the same one. Yep. Take a look at it, then. Can you read it? Return one. Well, what's the first part? Oh, oh, that is the first part on yours. We have different versions. Here, switch. Target one monster. Speak up. Target one monster on the field. Return that target to the hand. Okay. There you go. And the hand, of course, that's 
And this pretty old hand of mine, I mean, uh... <laughs> Alright, there we go. Three different kinds. Hopefully Your deck of cards. Out. Right. So, here's it. Put it in your hand, please. Okay. Hand. I'll put it in my hand. We'll pretend this is my hand. Here, here. Just for the sake of argument. For right now, or sake of time. Let's do that. Those are all in your hand now. We're going to pretend those are in your hand. We have a trap card. Uh, I'm going to go with Aquamador, and you get an Aquamador. You get an Aquamador, and you get an Aquamador. We all get Aquamadors. Okay. So let's say that it's your turn, and for whatever reason, you don't want to attack your Mador into mine. Because if they did, we would lose them both. So what you could do, Evangeline, stop scratching the heck out of the cards, please, please, please stop doing that. You could switch it into... No, these. No, I mean, no, no, no. It, remember, what's this called? If this is attack position, this is... Defense position? There you go. So, let's say you want to switch it in defense position. After all, this one has a much higher defense than it does attack, so it might keep it a bit more safe. Yes. Okay. Now, you have some cards in your hand. Let's say you would like to use this trap card, the one that returns another monster to the hand. What you do, you can't just play it out of your hand the way you could with spell cards. That's a, that's a big difference. Trap cards, Evangeline, have to be set first. So you have to put them face down on the field into your one of your zones down here. Okay? I'm going to put it on that one. Okay. His arm. You can actually do it with <laughs> multiples of them. For right now, I'm just going to say only do this one and Dust Tornado. Keep this one in your hand for right now. But you can, unlike monsters, which can only be one set per turn, spells and traps, you can do multiples per turn. Oh. Right. So, I'm going to do all three. Now, let's say that I would like to... Um, oh, wait, you've already passed your turn, and now it's my turn. And... Do, 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 do. <laughs> Wait, did I? Where did, where did, uh, what's his name? Where did Summon Skull go? Did you go back in here? Uh, uh, uh where did Summon Skull go? Where do you, hmm. Do you I have it. a, nope, I have it right here. There he goes. <laughs> I'm starting to lose track. Okay, well, uh-oh, I'm going to take mine. And I'm going to tribute it for Summon Skull. Rar, big monster, rar. Okay. Now, I would like to attack your Aquamador. So, even when it's during my turn, you can still activate your trap cards. That's one of the advantages of trap cards. They, they're slower to use because you have to set them first, but you can activate them even when it's my turn. So, I have a big monster that's about to run over your monster. What do you do? Turn them over? One at a time. You always do it one this at a time. One? Well, so which one is this? Compulsory it, it, evacuation device. And what does it do? Target one monster on the field. Return that target to the hand. Yes. So let's say that I've decided I want to attack your Aquamador. You can activate your compulsory evacuation device and do what it says. Yep, and it gets returned to my hand. Well, if it's returned to my hand, it can't be attacking anymore. So it's like that attack never happened. So now that you've used it up, it goes into your discard pile. But I still have one more left. Yes, you still have one more left. Except now, for this one. We're going to get into some really tricky stuff. Actually, it's my turn, and I set these this turn, so I wouldn't... Let's pretend this is a separate turn, okay? For some for some strange reason, let's pretend this is a separate turn, even though this normally wouldn't happen. I'm just doing it for the sake of example. Okay, so it's during battle, and I, I really, really... No, 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 that doesn't work. That absolutely does not work. 
And even if it did, that would just be confusing to you. Um, okay, never mind. Pass it on to your turn. Um. Okay, yep. So it's your turn. You can do stuff now. This one, if you really want to get rid of one of my cards over here, it says destroy one spell or trap card on your opponent's side of the field. You can set one spell or trap from your hand. That's why I had you keep this one in your hand. Because when you activate this one, you can then set this one anywhere you'd like, even if it's not your turn. If you'd like to, Evangeline, you can use Dust Tornado to blow up one of these. I recommend you try it. I would like to. Yeah. So I have to set this one and then well, I Well, yeah, can... this one technically happens afterwards, but sure, you can do that for right now. You're trying to blow up this one? Yes. Okay. So in <laughs> response, I'm going to use... This is a bad example, actually, but I'm going to use Call of the Haunted. I get to target one monster in my graveyard, special summon it in an attack position, but the reason this doesn't actually do very much is that once Call of the Haunted is gone, the monster's gone as well. <laughs> so that actually didn't do anything. But let's pretend that you hit... Ah, this one instead. Okay, so when you want, when you do something, I can respond with my own card. So now I can use Compulsory Evacuation Device. And in fact, if I wanted to, I could have done this and then compulsed Aqua Midori back into my hand. That would be really silly. No, I couldn't because <laughs> this isn't the stack in, in Magic. This has to go off first and I don't get to... Yu-Gi-Oh is weird. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh is a very weird game. If this were Magic, you could do that. You can't do that in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, I could return your Aqua Midori to your hand and then the compulse would go away and then the dust tornado would go away. Whenever someone does something like this, Evangeline, you can activate an effect, I can activate an effect, you can activate an effect, I can activate an effect, we can go back and forth like that. And then once no one has anything else that they want to add to it, then they resolve in reverse order. The last thing to go on is the first one to go off. Look, this is, I know this is tricky, but try to pay attention, please. This is, I know this is tricky. When you activate yours, I can then activate mine. So yours went on first, then mine went on second. So yes. the way they'll resolve is I'll resolve mine first, and then this one will resolve. They always go in the last one to go on, the highest one up here, is always the first one to resolve. It's kind of like you're making a stack of, uh, I don't know, <laughs> Legos? What's a good example for this one? You're building a tower made of Legos and you want to take it apart? You take it apart from the top, not from the middle, not from the bottom. You do it from the top down. Actually, that's a bad example because with kids, what you do instead is you knock the whole thing over and then make a mess and then you clean you it up. You can't that do way. that with Legos. No, you can't do that with Legos. <laughs> so actually, Legos is a really good example because you can't do that with Legos. You can't knock Lego towers over. Nope. I may have done that. A you can time knock time. it on the side, well, but okay, yeah, yeah. I mean. <laughs> See, now she's talking. Now she's. Mm. she's Math is for blockers. Good old Papa J teaching everyone how to have fun the right way. I'm trying. Everything is obvious in hindsight. Yeah. Scream into the heavens if the world shall know it's too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear goodness. I'm over here teaching her how to double battle footballers. And what am I doing? What am I doing? Oh, goodness. When I was... Birdie Kikyo! Yeah, yeah. Right before I... I paused playing the game for a while. There was a deck called Cyber Dragons. You would stick a bunch of monsters called Cyber Dragon onto the field and make either just make a swarm of those things, because you could, or use them to make even bigger monsters, and on and on and on. It just, it was silly. You, you could beat people on the first turn of the game, and you did it with that limiter removal I showed you. It, it was, it was dumb. <laughs> and it's a lot less powerful than what's in the game now. It's a lot less powerful. Okay, so let's let's recap a little bit, Evangeline. I'm going to give you some scenarios, and I want you to tell me what happens. Mm. If your Aquamador attacks my Aquamador, who wins? There. Mm. That way you can see their attacks. They're the same. Mm-hmm. The exact copy. 
That's right. They would both go in the Discord pile. In the Discord pile, not the Dis- Discord pile. Dis- <laughs> They'd both go in the Discord pile. <laughs> Discord is that thing that keeps going ping every now and then Discord. on my computer, I'm sure. They would both, yep, they both go away in the Discord pile. That's right. Discard. What if you attacked into it now? Now what would happen? Nothing? Well, not nothing. It's true that neither of the monsters would go away, but something would happen. You're doing your finger thing. So yours has how much attack? You can see on there. 1,200. 1,200. Actually, I'm going to try to get her in the habit of saying 1,200, because I think that might have thrown her off a little bit with some of the higher numbers. All right. So, yours has 1,200 attack. How much defense does mine have? 2,000. 2,000, yep. So, is that higher, or is that lower than your attack? Lower. Is my defense higher or lower than your attack? Higher. Now, now you're just saying that because it was the other. It was a multiple choice. It was a true or false, and you you got it wrong the first time. So now you say it. Okay. All right. Yeah, you can even see on yours because they're the same card. You can see what the defense is without having to look at mine. But yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. So, what happens when my defense is higher than your attack? and you attack into it. If my defense is higher than your attack and you attack into it, what happens? It's tough, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I, I don't know that we're ready for an actual game yet. I have a sneaking suspicion we might not be ready for an actual game no. yet. So what we're probably going to end up doing is we'll open the structure decks, but we won't actually play a game just yet. And I don't think we're... I, If this is still giving her trouble, I don't think we're ready for it just yet. Maybe with some more like guided practice, I suspect we could, but not not just yet. To be fair... You are learning this at an earlier age than I I was, but also, to be fair, the game wasn't in the U.S. when I was your age, so I didn't even have that as an option. <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> yeah, this is when I got a little bit older. The game was out, just not where I live yet. Not where I live at the time. So what would happen, Evangeline, is that you take the defense... Subtract the attack, so 2,000 minus, minus 1,200, 2,000 minus 1,200, and that's how much damage the attacker would take, which is 800. So they would both still be around. But I would take 800? Exactly. That's exactly right. Okay, so we're going to take a little bit of a break, folks. If you'll give us just a, just a moment, just a minuet. <laughs> minuet. <a> minuet. <laughs> yep. it, it is a different word, but it's also minute misspelled. <laughs> so uh, we're going to give it just a minute, run by the restroom, and we will open some stuff. We have open what we some stuff. Going to do, if I thought we could, I thought we could do it just yet. We're not there just yet. Is she actually picked out some starter, some structure decks? And we were going to take the two of them and play them against one another. They're exact. It's they're the same thing, so they'd be card for card, exactly alike. We'll do it at some point, just not yet. We're not ready. We're not there just yet. Um, one of the the good things going on over here, though, is that even though you know she only spends a, a bit of time with me, 
whenever she's over with her her uncle, her say maternal uncle, I guess. Her her mom's brother. He plays Yu-Gi-Oh and they watch the show a bit. I wonder if her mom actually still knows how to play. I don't I haven't Yeah. Maybe. I haven't watched it since like last year well to be so. fair the, the show is not the best teacher for the rules anyway if we're being honest <laughs> not exactly from the very first episode they cheat <laughs> so wait what well yeah in kaiba's case i guess he is actually just cheating screw the rules i have wait 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 did you just summon a bunch of blue eyes white dragons in one turn yeah so that's against the rules right She's never seen this, so this doesn't mean anything to her. Screw the rules, I have money! Your server now needs a channel called Pile, where you post <laughs> images of all the Yu-Gi-Oh! monsters that die in your games. <laughs> oh dear goodness. Wait, so whenever a Yu-Gi-Oh! Mon a random Yu-Gi-Oh! monster dies in one of our games, <laughs> we would have a lot more variety than what you would see right now, because you'd see cards that haven't seen the light of day in 18 years <laughs> showing up. Case in point, Aquamador over here. And that is actually, it's Legend of Blue Eyes, so that is an 18-year-old card. It actually says LOB on the bottom. This is an 18-year-old card. I don't see LOB. Oh, sorry, it's not on yours. Yours is a different version. Um, they're from, just like how in Magic, there's a little symbol here that shows what set it's from. Yes. Uh, this one uses S three letters there. So LOB is Legend of Blue Eyes. SDP is... S Start. Yeah, it's some sort of structure deck, I believe. A uh, structure deck Pegasus, I think, if I remember correctly. Which it, it looks like a Pegasus card. It's wearing a mask and clown makeup. <laughs> we about, cannot see at all what this is. I was about to try to do a Pegasus voice. I don't think that would work too well. Yeah, we can't see that zone at all. No. We haven't even gotten to the field zones yet. We haven't even gotten to the feel. Okay, really quickly before we take a break. Really, really quickly. Field. Not take long, I hope. Please. Maybe. Hopefully. Totally. All right. Back in the good old days when field spells actually uh, felt like field spells. Me. Nowadays, field spells feel like one, one player gets the benefit and the other person just has to deal with it. Where'd they go? Not you. Where'd they go? Not you. <laughs> There's one over here called the A-Forces, which is totally not a ripoff of the A-Team. It's exactly a ripoff of the A-Team. 100%. What is that? What? A-Team is a movie with uh, a pity the foe. Why can I remember the line and for some reason I can't remember his name? I'm just having a brain fart for some reason. <laughs> That's a very technical term, a brain fart. <laughs> Goodness grief. Mr. T. How did I forget Mr. T? E. Alright, where's another one? Pick one. Anyone. I don't care. I just The first field spell <laughs> that I can find. DD Designator. Back when I was being super anti-meta, that was in the last non-competitive deck that I ever played. G sure, Gaia Power. Let's go with that. Mm. Okay. Mm. Plop. Let me just slam my cards down. <laughs> down. Not a good idea. Uh, I'm sorry. That was really loud. See, now she's talking more loudly. I'm sorry. Let me cut it down. Not a good idea. Nope. Not not so at much. all. Nope. 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 <laughs> Eighteen was a sh it was a show, not a movie. Well, I never saw it, so now I know. <laughs> Oops. G Oops. <laughs> All right. And actually, I picked the two worst examples because do we have... These are water types, clearly. Uh, I don't know. Do you have a dark monster? You have an archfiend soldier. That's fine. 400 <laughs> aquamadors. <laughs> Why do I have so many aquamadors? Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, Gaia power. Gaia. It's Earth, Jay. Earth. Fire. Water. Earth. <laughs> Decreases their defense. Oh, I forgot how great that, that was. You just slap all the guards oh, yeah. down. Like, like, like that. There we go. Slam <laughs> all the guards down. Come on and slam. And welcome to the jam. Right. <laughs> Mine. Mine. <laughs> Actually, where did my graveyard go? Here's my graveyard. Slam. All right. right, right, right. So, let's, let's breathe. <laughs> Breathe, 
for a second. All right, now take a look at this one. This one is called Yami. This one's called Gaia Power. They do the same thing. What's the what's the dark one? Maybe this was actually before they had one specifically for dark and light. So maybe Yami is not the best example. Uh, I don't think it is. Let's see. Wasteland is for dinosaurs, zombie, and rock types. That was. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, dinosaur. Yes, actually, dinosaur monsters exist in this game. You dinosaur. can play a dinosaur deck. Dinosaur rock. Strictly cooler dragons is how I like to think of them. Strictly cooler dragons. <laughs> dinosaur like rock. If you can, if you have a chance to play dragons, why wouldn't you, right? <laughs> why? Why not? Who? Who would give that opportunity up? I wouldn't. I nope. like dragons. 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 Dra dinosaurs. <coughs> dinosaurs are cooler dragons, is what I mean to say. That's that's D it. That's that. D dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Dragons. Dinosaur. Dinosaur. Ooh, dino, 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 dinosaur. Bum bum bum. Mountain. Okay. Mountain. <laughs> Mountain. You're just making everything, everything silly. I'm doing my best. There's prohibition. Pro. <laughs> it's a fun word to say, and it's also an interesting time <laughs> in American history. <laughs> okay, well, I, that's a bad example because apparently I don't have that many field cards. I mean, I, I have a few, but they they care about types instead of attributes. So what I'm going to instead do is pick out Gaia Power again, just for the sake of making... Looking to see if I might have had a uh, dragon here really quickly. Dragon! Dragon. Dragon. I get a four-syllable word. <laughs> dragon is a four-syllable word now. Dragon. Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear goodness! What am What am I doing? <laughs> Let me teach you how to mispronounce words here really quickly. <laughs> okay, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. We have molten destruction. That's fine. Somehow that managed to be the only other one I have. Once saw a snippet of, of it on TV, and there was a ten-year-old boy portrayed by a forty. Wait, what? By a forty-year-old actor? I thought the Power Rangers had it bad. Were some of the Power Rangers series the teenage kids are played by a thirty-year-old? I didn't realize there was a ten-year-old played by a forty-year-old. There we go. Uh, okay. <laughs> Fun fact: I'll have that for trivia night. Uh, I mean, I have a dinosaur EDH deck, but I wouldn't touch a dragon EDH deck <laughs> with a 10 kilometer pole. Get out of here, wake up. Now, this is fine. We'll make this work. And then get a fire monster out. Blazing and Pachi. Cool. <laughs> it doesn't take much, folks. It really doesn't take much. Right. So, just for the sake of argument, so check this out, Evangeline. These two are functionally the same thing, except they care about a different type. Molten Destruction says, increase the, here, you can read it, attack. Attack of the fire, of, of all fire monsters by 50, mm. 500 points and decrease their defense by 400 points. Yes. And now, Gaia Power, increase the attack of all, all Earth monsters by 500 points and decreases their defense by 400 points. All is important here because so molten destruction and you can tell by the way that they're a field spell because they have this little compass symbol on them right there. That shows you that they go in the field card zone. Unlike these down here, you can only have one field card at a time. If you play Molten Destruction and then you want to play Gaia Power, you can do that, but it'll kick Molten Destruction out. Okay, but you and I can both have one at the same time. Actually, it didn't used to work that way. It used to be that between the two of us, we only had one, but that that's a different story. Okay, so yours says that it increases all fire monsters by 500 points. We're only looking at the attack for right now. It does decrease their defense, but everything's in attack position right now. Mine says it increases all Earth monsters 
by 500 points. So Blazing Impachi is 1850, so 1850 attack, plus 500. So here, here's hopefully a pretty easy one. What's 1850? I know that's a weird number. Plus 500. I'm going to already start <coughs> searching for another fire monster to see if I can find one that's easier for her. Okay. Where's this Thalos? You already got one. You already got it? No, um, oh, with I said you already True. got it. <laughs> okay, well, we'll just work with this one then. What's 1,850 plus 500? Give her a sec. Two luxury bones sitting in a glass of vinegar and salt. What does that mean, luxury bones? Tell Mystic I'm ready for that Axel v. Pot rematch. <laughs> I think she would be okay with that. Two, two thousand three hundred fifty. There you go. There you go. All this, right. This part just knocked out it on did. the field. So, here's another one. So, since I have Gaia power, Earth monsters get stronger. What is my 1,300 plus 500? Plus 500? Yep. 1,800? 1, 1,800. So, that means that I can, my giant soldier of stone can run over your giant soldier of stone, right? Yes. Well, no. Why not? You're correct that the answer is no, but why not? What's the attack of this one? A giant warrior. Speak up. A giant warrior. Made of stone. No, no, no. The attack uh, of it, not the uh, not the flavor text. Uh, What's its attack? Uh, it's not that hard. You've been giving me it. You've been giving it me this whole time. Giving it to me this whole time. You you're doing that quiet thing. One thousand eight hundred. Yes, it's now 1,800. That's right. So, because mine is 1,800, it's 1,300 plus Gaia power. So, it's stronger. But remember, it applies to everyone. So, it also applies to yours, because yours is an Earth monster, too. So, if I attacked into your giant soldier of stone, instead of mine winning out, they're both stronger. So, they would both go away. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Okay. So... Uh, that's progress, at least. We're making some progress. We're definitely not to where we can play just yet, With but... The, I think we're making some progress on yep. the adding as well. And what I was meaning when I was saying earlier, uh, hopefully you can get some practice when you're over there as well. Maybe you can ask some of them, uh, specifically Aaron. I'm not sure about any of the others, but at least you can ask Aaron, maybe, if um, he can teach you a bit. Um... That's one we might have to talk about. Um, yeah. yeah, we don't... Or, you know what? There's also plenty of... I, even YouTube Kids probably has some videos on a... Because I know that yours has a YouTube Kids app. There might be some videos about teaching you how to play over there. Well, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll, one way or another, we'll figure it out. And if not, we'll, we'll work on it next time that you're over. But after we take a break, we have some openings to do. We have uh, the structure decks you picked out. The structure decks that I picked out, and then some Pokemon cards from last year to open, and that one I think, <laughs> that one I think we'll have quite a bit of fun with. Oh boy, oh boy, we found the. We might well, not play it though. Well, we're not going. Well, I don't even know what's in it. Whether we could get enough cards to play with them, because I don't know sure. what's in it yet. So I don't even know if that. And if we did, we'd have to open quite a few. We'll, we'll, we'll show them what we mean when we get there, but folks, progress, progress. Progress. <laughs> we're, we're, we're getting there. Right. Progress. 
Poggers. All right, if you'll give Poggers, Poggers, yep. If you'll give Pog us just a, a few minutes, uh, we'll say five minutes or so, we will be right back, folks. So give us just a sec.
All right. So fun little story while we're getting the last little bit set up here. The video, the Vidya game <laughs> that I've played more than anything else, I don't think it's particularly close, is Dark Souls. If we count all the versions together, the remaster and the original on Xbox 360, PS4, PC, and also PC, <laughs> Steam, and the, the Win DVD ver Yes, there's a Win DVD version. If we count all of those together, that's the game I've played the most. The second most is probably Elden Ring at this point, but if it's not, then it's the Animal Crossing for the GameCube. Because I used to play the ever-living heck out of that game. <laughs> it's by far the GameCube game I played them. Oh, you know what? Before I... Hold on. I'm, I'm bad at this whole unboxing thing, right? I think what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to go, Oh, look, here. Here's the nice, shiny... <laughs> That's a terrible unboxing video, right? All right, so... We pick these out. Evangeline yeah, picked these out because they're colorful. Go. I'm pretty sure that's the reason. <laughs> and it has the like, really cool dragon on it. Right. This is the Crystal Beast structure deck. Uh, usually in Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, when they come up with structure decks, it'll what'll tend to happen is that it'll be some archetype. Uh, the magic equivalent would be something like merfolk or vampires or. <laughs> skeletons or humans or whatever and then oh yeah I'll hold it and then it'll have a few meta pieces it gives them a chance to reprint them every now and then uh, and that's more or less what this crystal beast legends of the crystal beast structure deck is so we'll open it nicely and gently and all that jazz and by nicely and gently I mean rip nope she's drinking I'm not going to say anything rip the top entirely <laughs> I like how you just looked at me. Yeah, yeah you were facing the direction of my computer. <laughs> not want any issues with that. All right. No, so, no. All of the cards together, Evangeline, are itty bitty teeny tiny like this. Do <gasps> not scratch these, please. <laughs> Pretty please. We don't have them in sleeves yet. <laughs> all right. Now, it won't... What, what's this? Experience the next generation of Yu-Gi-Oh! A digital trading card game. Ah! Oh, wait, this is just Master Duel, I think. I think? Pretty sure. Anyway, yeah, it's on Steam, the Switch, PS4. Yeah, it, it's Master Duel. Unless... No, that is. Okay, cool. So you take this little piece of plastic, and you gently pull it off. Can I well, do a little bit? You sure, go for it now. <laughs> the reason I said well is because by the time you said that, I would already gotten to the end of it, but... Yeah, sorry. So now what you do, is you take it, you pull this part up. Now you can do this part. See where my finger is? Yeah. So put your finger under there. And turn it, go to the right. Well, now it go down. <laughs> now go left because <laughs> it's been turning. <laughs> you, you were turning it, so the direction you needed to pull changed. <laughs> See, there you go. Uh, close enough. <laughs> Yoink. <laughs> Rip the paper, or whatever's now, around it. Part of the reason we're not doing this right now, Evangeline. Now, granted, this is the most complex card in the deck, but look at how much text is on this one. This very first one. I'll show the camera here in a moment. There's a negative Rainbow. chance that it will show up properly. It's pretty. It's very pretty. But, you know, Evangeline is going to have eight-year-old eyes that are 80-year-old eyes if we don't give her a magnifying glass to go with them. <laughs> <laughs> There's the thumbnail. There's the thumbnail. <laughs> Quite so. <laughs> a moment of culture, I see. What? 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 What else? You mean the chess board where every piece other than the king is female because pawns turn into queens? And oh! <laughs> Did you know there's an old predecessor to chess called Chataraji that was played with dice? Yeah, fun fact. <laughs> we had randomness. Thankfully, no loot boxes yet, but... No. Okay, silly. Okay. So yeah, Rainbow Dragon is approximately ten... Oh, seven lines of text. I was about to say ten lines of text, but no, not quite. On the other hand... One, two, three, four, five, eight lines of text for you. Ulti there's Rainbow Dragon, and then there's Ultimate Crystal Rainbow Dragon Overdrive. Can I see? Which is... Yeah, Please. you can see. Yeah. Very pretty to look at. And then there's Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon. 
And there's a whole bunch of stuff like this. Hey. Yeah. This is exactly what's on the picture of the box. Yep, that's what's Please called show the them. boss monster. It's usually the hardest one to get out, but usually also the most powerful one. Okay. Now if I can sneak this back. Unfortunately, <laughs> there's no way that I'm going to be able to show these back. to do them much justice, but I'll, I'll try my best. I'll try to... Uh, yeah, see if I can show them a bit. I would, this is where I would normally say pause in 1080p, but because of that camera, it won't be able to focus well enough to catch the teeny tiny text. But at least you can see the, the art. The art's nice. One I'm thing that I really wish that Yu-Gi-Oh! had is, well, two things. One, the illustrator on the card itself. And two, flavor text on effect cards. But you can see why they can't really fit flavor text on the effect cards. Not when they have... You know, an entire encyclopedia on every card. Oh, yeah, take a look. This I one is Rainbow this. Bridge of the Heart. Rainbow Bridge Total of the Heart. It's beautiful. So Bonnie Tyler is the, the one running this deck. Yes? It's beautiful. It is. It's very pretty. No, seriously, I really wish that they would put the uh, illustrators on here. Wait, is that? No, okay. I, th I thought maybe the illustrator was actually on the bottom, where it says 2020 Studio Dice Shueisha, but no, that's not it. Shueisha. S-H-U-E-I-S-H-A. It's beautiful. It is. You Shiny see, and of, beautiful. Instead of beautiful, the next one is just super, super cute. Oh, actually it focused Can a little I bit see? there. Crystal Bond. I'm going to show them to you a little bit out of order so that she can take a look at them. This one's Rainbow Crystal Over Dragon. Bond. Skipped one to get to that. Crystal Bond. It's adorable. It's it someone is. petting like a pet. It's a cat. It's a kitty cat. It's a kitty cat thing. It's Snuggle, 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 and Snuggle, Snuggle, Snuggle. Have I already nope. seen you this one? Jesse Anderson. Bonder with the Crystal Beast. Yes, there's a token. There actually, two no. tokens. Jesse and Ruby. Unleashing the Legend. So yeah, I'm just going to show these together. These are characters from the show. I see? In case you actually need... Just, just a second, but then yes. In case you need any tokens for this deck, it actually gives you some tokens. Hoorah! You know, and I should remember who this is, because... 5D, not 5D, yeah. <gasps> GX was the last one that I actually watched the whole way through. You just, yeah, that's that's the same one. <laughs> same one. That's correct. Here, you take a look at these two while I'm showing off stuff. Yep, and that was Master Duel. Womp. Womp womp. <laughs> oh god, no. Womp womp. Crystal <laughs> Beast Ruby Carbuncle. By the way, I think everything else that's in the deck should show up as a common until we get to the Link Monsters. I think think is how it works. Uh, yeah, we can just set those wherever. You can just set them wherever. In fact, when we actually do right sleeve there. up the deck, you'll want them to be in their own separate sleeves so they, they don't get confused with the main cards. You don't accidentally sleeve them. I'm going to keep them out here because they're not That's technically true. cards in the deck. There's at least three cards that mention <laughs> this cute little guy. Yeah, so if that, was, if that one back there was Meowth and this one is Persian, Amethyst cat. Oh, Amethyst cat. And, uh, oh, what's the name of the, oh crap, I can't remember the magic meme. Uh, help me, Rooklyn Knight, Evelyn, help me out with this one. Uh, it's the, the turtle from Konzatark here that shows up in every spoiler. I can't, I, I can almost, I can see the card's art. I can almost see its name. But I can't quite because of its effect, when it attacks, it's exiled, and then on the next turn, it comes in attacking. Meandering Tower Shell, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> it's so slow, it actually made it into this game as well. Oh, no, other way around. It's it's in Yu-Gi-Oh! first, and then it made its way. This is Emerald Tortoise. I found that in there, too. Yep. That one should have all of them. And they're just cut, they're just cut out. and they're just Someone went into Photoshop and just cut the background out and then moved them in. Oh, so goodness. Cute. I know that's not actually what happened, but I, that's my head cannon. That's my personal lore. Here's Topaz Tiger. Here's that, that tiger, no, not lion. Yeah, tiger? Whatever it is. That big cat in Elden Ring that f hits you in the Divine Tower and Castle Soul. Yeah, it has blades all over it. That's this one. <laughs> this one has one on its head and its arms. So it's exactly, or limbs. Exactly the same. Arms. Same thing. 
The topaz. Topaz. Yep, they're gems, Evangeline. The crystal beast. Oh. And so their names are all referencing crystals. Here's they're Amber all... Mammoth. Here's the thing I keep killing over and over in Skyrim. Yes, Evangeline? They're all um, month gems. Oh, yes. Yeah, some of them are uh, birth months. They're birth month with, yeah. gems. What? I think topazes would be mine. I have no idea. I think topaz. Cobalt sure. Eagle, which it's sounds yellow. like a gun made in the United States. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not too far away from one. Oh, oh. dear goodness. <laughs> America. America. And then oh, wow. Sapphire Pegasus. We're not singing the rest of that song. <laughs> not earlier. <laughs> Sapphire Pegasus. Oh, wow. For all the, the bronies out there. There we go. No. Here, check it out. It's a My Little Pony <gasps> card. And then Rainbow Dark Dragon. What on earth? What? I, I actually should remember this one. I mean, all, especially some of the seven dark monsters with different names from your graveyard. That seems like it'd be really tricky to... Wait a minute. Seven dark monsters with different names from your graveyard. In the structure deck, how many dark monsters have we come across so far? Not that many. Banish all that. Okay. Huh. Okay. Sorry, I should have waited to show it to you and then revealed it. Oh, good night, Evelyn. Oh, good night, Evelyn. I catch you later. I'll say farewells Bye. now. <laughs> oh, thank Bye, you, Evelyn. Desert Eagle. That's that's the actual. That's the one. That's the one. Whoa! Oh goodness! It's <laughs> it sounded like it because it was kind of close. All right, Chibi did ultimate crystal monster. Da 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 da. Cannot target. Okay, neat. It's looking at a pendulum. We are well away from teaching her what pendulums are, but if I remember correctly, <gasps> you do actually need to know what pendulums are for the purpose of playing this deck. Yes. Ten. It has ten, Evangeline. It has a lot. It, you can't actually can normal summon. Them. You did. You can't normal summon that one, though, because it says in its text that you can't. But if it did, that would be a lot of tributes. That one has even more. Right. <laughs> oh, and then uh, here's Crystal Master. And here's Crystal Keeper. Oh, 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 oh. Do we need to put this one over there? No, no, no. Believe it or not, that's an actual card you'll play in the deck. This one can be played either as a monster or as a spell. Cool. Yeah, that, yes, that's why it's orange on top and blue on bottom. This one is one more than the other. And for all the JoJo player, player, JoJo fans out there, here's Hamon. This is Joseph Joestar over here. <laughs> Look at her face. She knows. See? My little JoJo fan. Its, it's name is Hamon, and yes, it's spelled the same way. So it turns out we picked the perfect deck for my little JoJo fan over here. Note to self, next time that I do one of these, make sure to have some music playing lightly in the background. I could I could pick something out really quickly, just to help fill the silence. Uh, here's Dimension Shifter, which I should remember. I think I've seen this guy before, but off the top of my head I can't say that I have. Guy or gal, non-binary pal, robot named Hal. There we go, that's what it is. That's what it is. It's a robot named Hal. That's a, that's a movie you haven't seen yet, Evangeline. Yeah. One of these days, but not yet. Contact C. Oh! Not a... Wait, not a hand trap, is it? Cards are going to fuse. Unless they use this card as material. Really? Okay. Special summoning. To your opponent's field and defense position. Okay. Oh, that's a neat little card. That's a neat little way to help shut the opponent down a little wow. bit. Okay. I like the art for this one. Yes, that one's pretty neat. Got a little, yeah, you can check that one out. Oh, and now here's one of the reasons you do actually oh. want to go after oh. this structure deck or others. So in Magic the Gathering terms, this would be the equivalent of you know, what's a chase mythic that you have to have in order to be able to play Standard or Pioneer. Uh, or his store it. I don't even explore. um know that I want. I don't even think I want to know what's going on there. Right. Um, but We're, for some reason I do want to know. Yeah. Uh, it's an. That's actually an insect, right there. See the bright lights. Those are the uh, eyes of the insects shining really brightly. 
on uh, someone's hand? Yep, and that's a cooking pot lid. So I don't know what's going on either, Evangeline. I but think I do. <laughs> Maybe. I, 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 I honestly don't you know. You dare cook me? No, no, no. I'm pretty sure. So remember I said earlier that these structure decks will tend to be, you know, uh, cards within a certain archetype, and then a few reprints that they want to add that are meta. I'm trying to think of a good... What's a good... Um, Mythic. This would be the Elishnorn, I guess, maybe? Except Elishnorn, no. Elishnorn's a monster, in, or is a creature in magic. I'm trying to think of what a good spell would be. Uh, so Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring is something that you almost have to play in order to be competitive these days. And as a result, it is a really easy card for them to add to structure decks like this in order to sell. In Magic, what would probably happen is they, they would reprint it once every couple years, or reprint it as the one expensive card in a commander set or something like that in order to get more copies out there. In Yu-Gi-Oh!, you'll see in just a moment, the other structure deck that I have also has an Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. And <laughs> that helps them to get out way, way more of these. Uh, you don't actually play that as a monster, usually. You play that in your hand as what's called a hand trap, and it has one of a few different effects. So it's it's like a force of will, except you don't have to discard another, you don't have to exile a card with it, but it doesn't do quite as much. Speaking of which, here's a similar one. Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion. Usually this one's in the sideboard, though, but... You know, she has she has one that she can play. This is adorable. It is adorable. This one's adorable too. They're both adorable. Hand traps are pretty. And so I end up playing three Ash Blossom and Joy Spring because well, I've I've played as few as one, but you you, you don't want to lose. You don't want to die. <laughs> Turns out you don't want to die. So what you're saying is Ash Blossom and Joy Spring is actually a guy? I don't know what I said to imply that, but maybe. I no? It looks like a Toho character. <laughs> kind of. Does this one look like a Toho character? Uh, kind of? No, but this looks like a character in one of those dating sims where everything goes really, really horrible, so it's a Doki Doki Literature Club character. Never mind. Never mind. But <laughs> Things she doesn't know, and hopefully won't for a while. So then we get into all of the spells and traps. Ooh, we have more tokens. Ooh. It's the Captain Planet gems. You called it a- Ah! Uh, <laughs> I see what you mean. Hey. I see what you mean now. <laughs> These are all the gems. That's right. It, Would you like to show the camera really quickly? These are all the gems, except for, um, some of them have been transferred into a little bit of a different color and a little bit of a different shape. Something like that. By our powers combined. <laughs> da 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 <laughs> Yeah, I am seriously struggling to see where the Rainbow Dark Dragon comes into this deck, because so far, uh, one, yep, not counting itself, there is one Dark Monster. So, I will need to f figure that out. Oh, tokens got me. Oh, there we go, it's pretty. It's purty. It's purtiful. Purtiful. Oh. Crystal Beast token. Okay. And then... Awakening of the Crystal Ultimates. See, th these just have to be the most anime names. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to need to take a sip for a sec here. You can take a look at that. We'll, we'll both t probably take a sip for a sec. And then we have Crystal Aegis. Fun fact, there is a magic card with Aegis in the name. I pronounced it incorrectly for the Beautiful. longest time. It's a, I believe, a two mana two one that says you have Hexproof and is an enchantment. And I pronounced it, I think, Aegis? I, <laughs> Aegis. <laughs> like, like I'm from the, what, North Midwest where they say Egg? E-G-G -G is pronounced Egg up there. <laughs> <gasps> I think they do in parts of Canada as well, which makes sense. Yep. It's beautiful. It is pretty. That's the dragon getting hit with a rainbow from the sky. I think it's a, actually like a, a dra 
a good dragon that really likes rainbows. <laughs> a dragon that really likes rainbows. And the dragon's just coming down. Oh, it's coming down. All right. See, I thought of it like a oh. spotlight. <laughs> oh. Yes. Another another crystal. There is a so crystal. So we have we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight now. Eight right. crystals. I think we should stop that one for that one. Crystal. You can look at this one. You haven't seen it yet. Ooh, new one. And then Rainbow Bridge. This one's actually quick enough to explain. It, it's it's the tutor for this deck. You get to add a crystal beast from your deck. Yep, deck to your hand, not deck or graveyard. Cool. Well, that's pretty neat. Easy enough. One of the advantages to playing this normally pretty underpowered archetype is that you do have a little bit of consistency by using Rainbow Bridge, which you need <laughs> because this is not by Yu-Gi-Oh by modern Yu-Gi-Oh standards, this is not the most explosive deck in the world. Um gives you a chance to Yep. Yes, after you get rid after you put down all those Crystal Beacon. Yes. There's something else in the co in the box. Oh, we'll I think take a we look should at it. we should do that after all these cards. Ooh, okay. Now Mystery. Crystal Blessings is pretty swell. Takes two of your crystal beasts from your graveyard and puts them in your spell and traps. See, I haven't explained this to Evangeline yet, but because I haven't even explained what continuous spell cards are. Uh, crystal beast are... The, the monsters can themselves go into your spell and trap zones, which is handy because there are cards... In order to get out, for example, Rainbow Dragon, you're going to have to have more crystal beasts than would normally be possible to be on the field. And the only way that you can do that is by getting them onto your spell and trap zones as well. So here, you can take a look at this pretty shiny card. I swear, if that one exists as a rare or a super rare where the art is foiled, that would be that'd be great. Same thing with Crystal Abundance. This seems like one of those decks that you would want to foil out just for how shiny it would be. Now, oh. Crystal Abundance, I don't remember. I know I've seen it before. Send four Crystal Beasts from your Spell and Trap Zone to the graveyard. Send as many cards on the field as possible to the graveyard, then Special Summon as many Crystal Beast monsters as possible from your graveyard. Up to the number of cards sent from your opponent's field to the graveyard by this card's effect. By the way, when it says, uh, send as many cards on the field as possible to the graveyard, that means your opponent's side as well. So you can make your opponent get rid of their own stuff. They now have an empty board. <laughs> and then there you go. That gets that gets silly really quickly. Crystal. Yes, it's it's not the hardest thing in the world to set up, but well, you know. I there, really there are... like where the uh ov with the uh reddish one joins the diamond one. Right. It's, oh yes. It's kind of cool. Yes. One that these two, the oh, diamond one and the one pretty. next to it. Oh! Yep, that's one of them. This one? Yep. And this one? Same thing. That's right. It shows off the different crystals, you see. Yes. This one? Uh, not there. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. You can just take a look at that for just a moment, and then I'll trade you with this crystal tree over here, which I also don't recognize. Some of these cards I know existed when I played back in the day, and some of these, I suspect they have to be new. I don't recognize Crystal Tree at all. Here you go. Oh, Crystal wow. Release I do recognize, though. Yes, Tree This is ever. Basically, this is Emerald Splash. <laughs> but instead of all being emeralds, there are all kinds of other, other gems as well. <laughs> it's basically Emerald Splash. Emerald Splash. Yep, there we go. You can put the Crystal Tree down. Here you go. So it turns out, not only does it have the one JoJo reference in Hamon, but Two. it's it's Kakuin playing the deck. Kakuin. So uh, we got uh, two JoJo references in here. Nice. Uh, and we, we got way too many more. too many crystals. You know, Hamon's Lord of Striking Thunder does remind me of the world Dio stand. The color scheme is right, at least. Which one? Hamon. Lord of Striking Thunder, kind of reminds me of Dio, and Dimension Shifter reminds me of Inyaba. I don't remember Inyaba. She's the old lady who's like this the whole time. You don't. You don't remember her? She no. was only in about three or four episodes, and 
no. not that much in most of them. So rare value, you take a look at that one. Rainbow refraction. <laughs> I'm a fire in my laser. <laughs> I'm a fire in my... Oh. As you do. As you do. Here you go. Those are actual Yu-Gi-Oh cards. That's actually what oh. they look like on the back. Oh, here's how you make Rainbow Dark Dragon work. Advanced Dark. All Crystal Beast monsters on the field and in the graveyard become dark. If an ultimate Crystal Monster attacks, negate the effects of the attack during that battle phase. During damage calculation of a Crystal Beast Monster, you control battles and you would take damage to send one Crystal Beast Monster from your deck to the graveyard. Take me okay. Neat! Neat! Is it worth playing this so that you can get the Rainbow Dark Dragon as well? I suspect not. I mean, you can't tutor it. Amazing. With uh, Rainbow Bridge. Yeah, take a look at that. Melody of Awakening Dragon. He has an electric guitar. <gasps> it's an electric guitar with a dragon on it, on its head. No, no comment. <laughs> Absolutely no comment whatsoever for any of this. It looks like an el a rejected elemental hero, or destiny hero, or what's the other type of hero that exists? See, there's Elemental Hero, Destiny Hero, something else. There's the Neos, but those don't count. Uh, here you go. Swap out. This one is just basically a, like, if they were, like, Pokemon, they evolve. That's, like, what I imagined they would look like. It kind of reminds because me of that look. scene where Mewtwo gets all of them. Remember? The, oh, yeah. On the island? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was... She and I watched that movie together, and that was, uh, someone maybe, maybe have been about to cry, maybe a little bit. <laughs> um, there was a very sad part. There was, yes. Very, very sad. Right. Near the end. Mm. It, it, nope. No more talking about it. No more it. talking about it. Send one speller trap from your deck to your graveyard. Foolish Burial Goods. I can't remember if Foolish Burial is any card, or if it's just monsters, because this one looks like a... Strictly worse version. Uh, here, I'm just going to show you. It's a hand reaching out and grabbing some flowers. Oh, there, nice. that, that's that. Yeah. Works. Cosmic Cyclone. Oh. Pay 1,000 life points, then target one spell in the spell or trap on the field, banish it. This is uh, maybe for the sideboard. It's pretty situational. You usually just want to play Twin Twister instead, I think. If you're going to go for that kind of effect. It's it doesn't exile, but... Yes? It's also grabbing a necklace. The All right. blue necklace. Crystal Boon, where our four-eared Meowth over here. Or, uh, Umbreon, I guess? Sure. Let's go with that. Uh, yeah. Has its own Emerald Splash. Emerald Splash? Right. I know Crystal Miracle, but I don't know that I've ever actually understood what this card does. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. Cool. This is so adorable. It really is. I love all the ones with the little cat thing in there. Because the cat thing's so adorable. Right. Crystal gonna... Brilliance. Crystal Brilliance. There we go. Oh, there we are. My arm. My poor arm. Ow. <laughs> it's okay. I'm yeah, sorry. a bunch of these are going to be... Sorry. Insert two of them. On the card at once, so there's that one. Here's I Crystal see. Pear, where like, uh, Rarity oh and the Elden Ring Tiger <laughs> team up. Sure, that makes just as much sense hey, as the anything Elden else. Elden Ring Tiger is me, mine. Okay, <laughs> sure. That was a pretty quick look for her as well. Crystal Conclave. Crystal Conclave. Say that five times quickly. Can you do that? Crystal Conclave, Crystal Conclave, Crystal Conclave, Crystal Conclave, Crystal Conclave. Uh, <laughs> I know, it's tough. Crystal... <laughs> <laughs> we'll try something crystal easier conclave, first. Crystal Conclave, what? Conclave, what is going on? <gasps> so we don't have any... Crystal Magic. We don't have any more room. No, we don't. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll make some room. We'll put them at the top, then, I guess. Here you go, take a look. Counter Gem. The Counter Emerald oh Splash, God, which sounds like a move that Kakumin would have in one of the fighting games. 
Say crystal magic. Uh, we'll just set it, yeah, over here at the top. Tippy top. Tippy tippy top. There you go. Okay. Ferret Not much at flames. all. <laughs> Almost there. I don't know what this one is. Let's see. If the combined attack of all face-up monsters your opponent controls is higher than your life points, make your opponent shuffle all... <laughs> Wait, I already like this. Shuffle face-up monsters they control into the deck, except monsters with zero attack, so that the combined attack of the remaining monsters they control becomes less than or equal to your life points. So if your life points get slow, you can make them get rid of a bunch of their monsters. It, you can make it get rid of all of their monsters if it gets really low. If it's if your life points is lower than the lowest attack of a monster they have, well, face up monster. Still, that's pretty nifty. I don't know that I. It it also has a ferret farting on it. Did so. you <laughs> did you um show them this? I did yes. And then the metaverse. This is the Persona slash Facebook card. Welcome to Persona Five, folks. Persona. <laughs> Persona is making you. No, wait a minute. When did this come out? Yu-Gi-Oh! is making a Persona reference. I think. Sure, let's go with that. It's farting out fire. Yes, the ferret flames is farting fire. Ferret flames farting fire. Ferret flames farting fire. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> You're still it, playing? Uh, not right now. You know, we're just showing off one of the decks really quickly. One of Jay, the structure decks, yes? This is like what would happen if um we're all just going... We're, all just doing our thing in the city, and then all of a sudden there was a portal. Um, uh, just that just showed up and took us to the future. Right. And 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 um, and it was from the science lab because they didn't know what they were doing. Evangeline's over here writing an anime, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, either, either this somehow managed to come with not enough cards, or uh, two of them are stacked one atop another, because there should be, let's see, how many are we looking at right now? No, 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 this is right. No, this is right, okay. So a Yu-Gi-Oh deck has to have at least 40 cards, but the Rainbow Overdragon doesn't count, neither does the Rainbow Dragon Overdrive. So here, just for these, that's 35, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Really? So there's 44 cards in here. Really? Okay. Um, hmm. Well, 44 main deck cards. Okay. Yes, you take a look through that. Now the time. Now time to open the other thing. Or whatever this is. You can is. show them what that is. Or this is. I don't know how to get it open. Here, I'll I'll help you so it doesn't tear. No, you got it. I think. Yep. yep. So we'll save that for later. Yeah. But this one actually does have this extra zones I told you about. Yep, it's a play mat with the rules on the back. Very quick little summary of the rules on the back. Ta-da! We got a new play mat. Right. Um, and the two cards at the top. Um, <laughs> right. and the two card space at the top. Um, that does not really. Um. We haven't learned what those. Do. I haven't taught you what those do yet. Yes, and they um are off. Half of it is off of the play mat. Right. So we're just going to have to uh, do something about that. <laughs> so for right now, Evangeline, since we're not to the point where you can play these just yet, we're going to put these back up. When it comes time, when you actually are <gasps> well-versed enough, comfortable enough with this, you and I will actually play our decks against each other, and neither of us will have an advantage because our cards will be exactly the same. You'll have exactly the same cards in your deck as I will. So... It'll be up to who has the better luck and who plays better. And because I like taking it easy on you, <laughs> when we're just getting started, at least. Hey. Right. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's a Luigi's Mansion. Dup -ba -dup -ba -dup -ba -dup. It's whenever Luigi catches a, a 
an item? I don't think that's when he catches a ghost. But it's definitely the music that plays when he catches a, uh, say, Mario's hat or whatnot. Actually, no, it might be when he gets a ghost as well. Bup it up it up it up. Alright, put these in the back. I'm going to put the tokens on the front to sort of protect the front. And then put the Master Duel card on the back to protect the back. Protect the back. We need to protect the briefcase! <laughs> she has no idea what that's from. I haven't shown her yet. Maybe one of these days. Time to do the other thing now? Uh, what other thing? Oh, that one? Uh, I was going to show mine first, but yeah, we could do that really quickly. Ooh. Uh, we'll take a quick little Pokemon break, I guess. Is that what's going on? Um, no, I would like to do this at the end, but okay, well, we'll since yours through. are identical, I mean, we already technically... Oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry, so, okay, let me clarify something really quickly. This is yours, this is mine, for, uh, we haven't opened this one yet, for the decks that you picked out. Let me put this back in. Oh, so. we have a deck that you picked out? Yes. So these we picked out oh, so that no. we can play them one against the other. And then I I don't remember picking picked those out, out but. this structure deck. And if you play Yu-Gi-Oh, you know that this structure deck is really, really good. Can I, I, I see? had said yes. I had said previously, a couple times, <gasps> that usually what'll happen is that most of the cards will be a certain archetype, and then the extra cards that will be cards that are just generally good. Yeah, this is, let's say this has a greater share of cards that are generally good, and the cards that are in here that are generally good are really, really good. So, for example, that Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, that's also in here, along with there's Raigeki and Harpy's Feather Duster. It's a Trap Tricks deck, so it has the normal whole ones. Whole ones. Huh. Um, it has Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. It has the hands. It has Zahando. It, it does, in fact, have Zahando. It has one artifact, but no one cares. Um, not that... Well, I say not that long ago. I'm getting old. Because eight years ago is... Nine years ago is not all that long ago to me. Back in 2014, Evangeline, um, not far from here, in, in Georgia, just outside of Atlanta, um, the North American finals for the world qualifiers... The two people in the finals were both not just from the same city, not just playing the same deck, but they were both from the same game store. And I did not know the two players very well at the time, but I went to the game store afterwards with your uncle, actually, with Aaron, and we ended up going, going over and seeing the, the, the champion for a bit. That was, that was pretty neat. Um, yeah, he... he passed away some years ago, though. I think he lost a battle with cancer, if I remember correctly, but yeah, he, the, the winner passed away. Um, but even so, there's still a lot of really good players over there, one of which was your age when he got started competitively, so it's definitely possible for you to do it. Now, granted, he started sooner than you did. He didn't start at eight. He started younger than you. <laughs> you're, you're getting started now, so it'll take you a sec. I've I watched it last year, though, but right. as you said earlier... <laughs> the show is perhaps not the best tutor. No. So really no. quickly, Evangeline, I'm going to go through... That I, would, I would say you could probably take three of these and put them together and have a deck that can actually reasonably play in tournaments. Which is why... <laughs> There are three of these here. <laughs> you're, you're genuinely not... Please don't do that too much. You're genuinely not missing that much. I am missing... I would like to have one set of three of a certain spell card. And that's about it. And that's not even a need. There, there's... What's a good example? Um, there's a Yu-Gi-Oh! equivalent of... What, what would you say? Ponder? If Ponder looked at the top six cards of your deck instead of the top three cards, uh, and you can only play it once per turn, and that's the only thing I'd really be missing from it that I would add, everything else is already in here. So at, at some point, I will 
see if I will not see if I will put these together and actually make a deck. The problem is that there isn't a place that does any competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! anywhere particularly close to here. Which is sort of fine in the meantime, because when I go, I would like Evangeline to go too, and actually be able to play a little bit. And we definitely aren't there yet. But, you know, so Trap Tricks, what is... it? What, I know there's a number of Magic players on here, so the best way that I can explain Trap Tricks is... Back when I, back in that era I talked about in 2014, where uh, Corey McDuffie and Dion Ackridge were playing, it was kind of Delver. You have some small creatures that lets you win by building value and poking the opponent to death. You just never let them play the game. Uh, just like Delver in Modern and Legacy and Vintage and all that. Uh, nowadays, the game is actually quite a bit faster than that, and... Trap Tricks is sort of like, it's still like Delver, but it's like Delver if it also had turn one combo lines. <laughs> so it's combo Delver. <laughs> it's, it's really good. Combo Delver. Yeah. It's the kind of deck that gets better the more you know about the format, and I don't know very much about it right now. I could not tell you the second thing about Kashtira. And the first thing is that it's apparently Joe Biden's favorite deck. Or at least that's what YouTube has told me. All the... Joe Biden and Donald Trump and Barack Obama AI memes. Anyway, so I'll I'll play it. I'll try to get good at it at some point. For right now, normally what I would do is I would open them and try to put them together, but that would take a while, and I can do that on another stream when it's not going to, uh, well, frankly, bore Evangeline. She's over there bopping her head right now, waiting, waiting patiently, crossing her eyes. No. Oh. No. So instead, what we're going to do, I'll save this for another Yu-Gi-Oh! stream, is I will... Uh, can you hand that over to me, please? The Pokemon? Yes. Can I... Yes. Split, do... Oh, oh. Ah. Oh. And... Oh. <laughs> By the way, point of reference for how different Yu-Gi-Oh! is from games like Magic, um, in Yu-Gi-Oh! there is a costless, one-sided Wrath of God that is... You'd think that would be the best card in the game, um, but it's it's not even limited to one or two. You can have three copies of Raigeki. One-sided Wrath of God. You can have three copies of it. Uh, Harpy's Feather Duster is now available. You can now play three of that in your deck. I Actually, you know what? I think it's three. I'm not... 100% positive of that. I'm pretty sure it's three, but I guess I wouldn't swear by it. Oh, really quickly, let me show this off first, because I'm not sure that we got a zoom of it. So, back during last Halloween, they had these trick-or-trade booster bundles. There are 40 packs of three cards each, and what's supposed to be the case is that you could give them out like a like candy for a trick-or-treat. So, trick-or-treat, Give them something good to eat, and then you give them Pokemon cards. And so there are 120, 40 times 3. I'm not going to make... Well, I already gave the answer, but previously she actually was able to answer that on her own. Um, but it took her a while. <laughs> when we were in the car driving back, she got it. But now we're on camera, and so there's pressure, and so it's probably not a great idea. But... Out. <laughs> Trickery! <laughs> Nailed it! Nailed it! <laughs> I... Trick or eat. So, Evangeline, if you will open the first one, be Trick very careful. Or eat. Actually, I'll show you how to open them. So you look at the back. See this tab back here? Yep. You first thing you do is you fold it over the opposite way, like that. That Good. was facing. Yep. So the shimmery stuff. Then, in your case, it's probably easier to do it the way I'm about to explain. If you have nails, I have a little bit. Okay. Nails. You can. Pull down like this, just enough that you can see there's a little triangle there. See that opening right there? You don't have to pull it all the way down, but just enough to reveal that triangle. Then, you put your f nail... Actually, I should have cut my... Well, no, it's fine. I didn't I didn't cut my nails, but now it's actually paying off. But I'll be sure to Say. cut them afterwards. Yes? I'm not sure, but I made a... <laughs> yeah, I was thinking this might be the easier way, but it may not be. Alternatively... Oh my goodness, I'm having a hard time... There it goes. Getting a grip. <laughs> there you go. Ta-da! Actually, that's kind of easy. Yep. 
Making the triangle is kind of easy. I think it's a little harder when there aren't as many cards in the pack. All right, so show them, please. Only three. <laughs> well, don't show them as well. Well, it's fine. It's okay. It's their first time. It's their first time. So the first one is Miss Magius. I, I recognize Miss Drevis. I don't remember Miss Magius. So all of them are going to be ghost-themed, Evangeline. I don't know if they'll all be ghost Pokemon. I suspect not. But there's all a Halloween theme to them. Don't bend it. We don't want... <laughs> oh, dear goodness. I, I strongly suspect there won't be a $5,000 Pokemon card in the Halloween booster bundle. Maybe, but I'm betting not. Litwick? Uh, Litwick, yep. Little. So there's a little fire tie. It's a candle. See? Try to hold it still if you can, because my camera does not like to focus. Ah, there we go. Focus. You did a little color correction there. That was interesting. <laughs> you know what? We should open a few of these every now and then. Hey! Yours had Mistrevis and the evolution from Mistrevis. Mistrevis! Miss Magius, was that it? Edit in Gen 4? I should know that then. If for nothing else from Pokemon Go. Huh. Okay. Let's see. I All right. Remember to, oh. da, whenever he picks up a key. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking through old chat messages I should have seen a, a while ago. Do the goofy three monster. Rest his traps in magic deck. <laughs> right. Female dark magician. Oh, dark magician girl? Dark magician goil? Dark magician grill? Girl. <laughs> I'm just being silly, Evangeline. Intentionally mispronouncing. So for mine, I have three. Uh, Trevenant. I remember Phantom, but Trevenant. Let me see if I can hold it nice and still. Oh, and did yours have the Pikachu uh, with this? Did it have the oh, Pikachu all of pumpkin? them have that. Good, good, good. Can okay. I see? Yes. Whoa. And then Lampent, <laughs> which uh, Chandel. Uh, this entire line kind of makes me think that they phoned it in a little bit. <laughs> That's like Pokemon a lantern designs. on yes. Halloween. <laughs> well, conveniently, one of them is lantern. Uh, and then there's Sinistee. Again, one that just seems sort of phoned in. Put two damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon. So it doesn't itself do damage, but... Huh, okay. Ooh. It's only 30 HP. Ooh, that's a... Uh... Okay, well, it doesn't have to be strong. It's a... It's a... Oh, it's adorable. Trick or treat. It is adorable. There is that. It is definitely it's adorable. It's like a teacup. Right. It's like, like a teacup. Now, there are adorable. 40, there are 38 more Evangeline. 40 in total. We're not opening all of them now. No. So, so, um, should we open one each whenever you're over? And then yes. we can do, okay. I like that idea. Open one each until Halloween. Until Halloween. Mwahaha. And if we put these together, Evangeline... We could, you'd think that we could make a, a Pokemon deck, but two problems. One, now granted this is a small sample size, but you notice we didn't get any energies. We're going to need energy in order to be able to play, and I suspect that we don't have any in here, or we only have the specialty ones. I don't know that for sure. We've only seen six out of 120, but I suspect not. Um, and two, because those wouldn't be as exciting to pull, you know, for the, the kids that get them out of their trick-or-treat. Um, and then two, Pokemon does not currently have a sanctioned Eternal format. It has what would be the equivalent of Standard and Extended, which is not even a thing in Magic anymore. So if that's the case, if that's still the case, you wouldn't be able to use these competitively in not too terribly long. But it's okay, it doesn't matter. We're just collecting them anyway. Because they're neat. I just think they're neat. There's my Marge Simpson impression, also known as my gravelly Mickey Mouse impression, I guess. Okay, I think I will. <laughs> I can't do it! She's doing Charlie Brown's teacher. You just do a falsetto, and then you make it sound like this. That, that's not right, but eh, close enough. 
<laughs> each everyone, each time I'm here, okay? <laughs> there we go. There we go. Okay. I wonder which character in Persona Five I'm going to make do do that voice, do the Marge uh, voice. Um, oh, um, um. So, Evangeline, um, uh, <laughs> we're going to find a nice, safe place to put these so they don't get uh, ripped and torn until it is done. <laughs> She, she doesn't know what, what Doom is, so let's, let's, let's ignore. Yeah, we'll be fine. Doom. Doom. Yeah, it's a it's a game. It's a game. One of the stages, the music for it is called Rip and Tear, and then that became this a line that was used in one of the later games. Rip and Tear until it's done. Never mind. Never mind. We're not going to be playing Doom anytime soon. We're going to ignore the tiny bit of maybe hypocrisy about six year old me playing Doom and not letting eight year old her play Doom. But I think I have a, yeah. I think I have a good enough reason for not. I think so. <laughs> maybe. Space. Six year old me. Space. The space, final space. frontier. She's over here dancing while space. I'm saying whatever. Space. Uh, don't worry, it only gets worse. One of the new Pokemon is literally a one-to-one -one flamingo. Its name is Flamigo. Okay, I like the amigo in it though. Amigo? Yep. Amigo. Spanish for friend. It might be other languages as well, but I'm only aware of Spanish. Ta -da. Amigo? It's the, the same root that gives us amicable, which means friendly. Hola, amigo. <laughs> Mi amigo. Oh, goodness. Hola, grief. amigo. And then the amiga is female friend, but it, it's also a computer from back in the day. From way back in the day. I almost All right. it. Yeah, okay, so now we're at the point where we're just having fun balancing an empty pack of Pokemon cards. <laughs> and you're balancing cards. Sure, ram. <laughs> sure, ram. Sure, ram. Shazam! Newest <gasps> Pokemon. Wait a second. Doom 96 and Doom 297 should be okay. Maybe. 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 I didn't. Shaz I played them and I didn't get. Uh, Shazam is a real movie. Yes, I didn't get. Uh, I, I'm. I'm fine. <laughs> I didn't have any detrimental effects from it. Still, better safe than sorry, I suppose. And she has played Dark Souls, so I have a I sneaky suspicion that Doom wouldn't be. Wouldn't be a big issue, a big deal for her. I played Elden Ring. True. Doom. Well, you played Dark Souls I mean, all the way through uh, um, with me. Um, you haven't played I've Elden played... Ring all the way through yet. No. Um, In other words, you've seen stuff. But at least. Uh, yeah, I have a sneaking suspicion. So one of the reasons I'm a little bit worried about her playing Doom is that, you know, in Dark Souls, we could just turn the blood off and there's no jibbing, there's no gore, anything like that. Uh, there is in Doom, and that might be... I mean, she hasn't played Bloodborne, and that's one of the reasons why. You actually can't... Blood. Mods notwithstanding, and there are mods if you play on a jailbroken, a jailbroken PS4. Mods notwithstanding, you can't turn off the blood in it, and there is definitely some uh, uh, gory goodness, so... Maybe not just yet. Also, Bloodborne is actually meant to be a horror game, and the others are not. And so it's meant to be scary, and the game gets scarier as it goes on. So, maybe not just yet. <laughs> maybe not yet. Oh, yes? <laughs> I set my, my Gengar in face-up attack position. Gengar and Pikachu. Get one of the team Pokemon cards. Yugi. Oh, you, oh, Yugi, just Yugi. <laughs> Yugi Pokemon. Yugimon. Yugimon! Totally great! <laughs> Sorry, Yug. Doing this. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Uh, Team Four Star Joey? Or Yu Gi Oh! The Abridge Series Joey? Uh, I'll trying to do Joey. I'll show you at some point. But there's a series online, Evangeline, where one guy does all of the voices for all of the characters for quite a bit of the show. I think it was. It was in. Not until Rebecca showed up that one of the voices was done by someone other than him. <laughs> and so naturally, Taya sounded like this, and Mai sounded like <laughs> a higher pitched version of that. <laughs> I can't do any voices when I'm smiling, though. That doesn't work. That doesn't okay, work I'll stop smiling. Let's see. So, what, what was Senator's line? Yugi boy. <laughs> That's too low, but something like that. You get the idea. Oh, Yugi boy. You can't beat my toad monsters. <laughs> <laughs> Screw the rules! <laughs> and so on and so forth. Yeah, Joey's is supposed to be a Brooklyn accent. Accent. 
What about Yugi? Uh, which one? Regular one? No. My grandpa's deck. Wait a minute, it's supposed to be Yami for that one. My grandpa's deck has no pathetic cards, Kaiba, but it does have this. Exodia! What? There's no way! Yay! That can't be! Ah! Exodia! Obliterate! <laughs> what about the little kid one? Done green. <laughs> the little kid one. I could try. Uh, <laughs> what's the, what's the line? Hey, Grandpa, can, can you show me your super special awesome mega ultra blue eyes white dragon card? Sure thing, my boy. Right here. Kaiba walks in. Kaiba tears card. Kaiba walks out. Refuses to elaborate. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. I think at least some of the earlier parts of that are not inappropriate to show her. I'd have to watch some of that myself to see, but I'm pretty oh. sure the first episode is fine. I've watched more than the first episode. It's the abridged series. Oh. Although I do I do very much like the one where it's all Team Four Star voices. Where I think it's uh Yami is played yeah, yeah, Yugi is played by the uh, heavy. Uh, da, 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 da. Da. It's good day. <laughs> what? I'm not done. Not by a long shot. <laughs> Of course, Tristan's the pyro. <laughs> there we go. Kaiba's the scout. Kaiba! I think his granddad is the is the medic. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Three blue eyes, white dragons. Where do you get that from? <laughs> Something like that. Pretty much like that. <laughs> Wait, did you summon a bunch of monsters in one turn? Yeah, so? That's against the rules, isn't it? Screw the rules, I have money! Yeah, that, that line. <laughs> yeah, you did that, you did that earlier. I did, I did. That, that's where that came from, it's the first episode. Okay, we're, we're just talking and not really doing very much, right? Can I quote a line from one of the parodies I've seen? It has swears. Uh, you can put it in chat, and I can translate it into something okay. you can show a five year or a five year old, an eight year old, five year old. I'm looking at the number five. I'm not five! Nope, nope, you're not, you're not. I I'm three years older than five. That's a hey, we're doing addition. <laughs> there we go. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> See, we're still doing mathematics over here. No! The more you do it, Evangeline, the better you'll get at it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's only fair. I can't. True. I can't do what he did. So there we go. <laughs> you mean you can't stand on your hands? No. Fine. Oh, oh, oh. I can, but I can't do it well. Dalsim. <laughs> Except the stretchy legs instead of stretchy arms. <laughs> okay, let me try. All right. I, I. <laughs> See all those push-ups pay off. <laughs> See, the trick is that when you extend your legs out and you put your weight that way, you have to make some part of your body go backwards. So your legs go out, and your torso goes back to balance you out. Otherwise, you'll fall over. You're going to bump your head. I can't <laughs> You'd be careful. do that. I You'd can't do it. Careful. Oh, look what I did. <laughs> See, now we're not even playing Yu-Gi-Oh. We're playing. We're just playing. <laughs> we're spending some quality... Daddy daughter time. Let's go with that. <laughs> That's what the DD in Yu Gi Oh stands for. There's a Daddy bunch of daughter. called DD and then DDD. I don't know why. They just. I'm sure it means something, but it's. DD really... is totally for daddy daughter. Let's go with that. D DD Crow. D A D is for daddy and. Uh, uh, dad and daughter. DD. D Warrior? Warrior lady? Crow? Designator? Oh. Uh, Wanderer? Anyway. <laughs> oh, now we're walking on our knees? <laughs> oh dear, that gets that gets hard to do very quickly. I don't know that I'd... <laughs> Alright. Well, anyway, my favorite line of monsters is the Gaga Gigo line, though. <laughs> Gaga Gigo. Yep. Gaga Gigo. What? Uh, um, let's see. Oh, d d d d d please, 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 you're gonna yank something. Do not do that. Please do not pull on your... Yeah. Remember, that's connected to something that's connected to the computer. Please, please don't. That would not be good. <sighs> okay. I just had one I, I was going to say myself, and I forgot what it was. Dang it. Dang it, Bobby. <laughs> Dang it, Bobby. <laughs> Bobby. My boy just ain't right. <laughs> what are you even doing? Uh, King of the Hill. Hank Hill. I sold propane and propane accessories. I don't do that one well. I just like doing it. I don't do it well, but I still <laughs> like doing it. <laughs> Bus, bus, oh dear. 
Can't you tell you're not making Christianity better? You're just making rock and roll worse. Hmm. <laughs> Saren Duck. There we go. Oh, oh, the, uh, oh, what was I, oh, yeah, Solemn, the Solemn Judgment, the God and his just that, that line, <laughs> there is actually some lore behind that one that I, I very much like. Although it's not specifically the God character, it's also, it involves one of the, just, <laughs> it involves one of the angels that follows him around. Angels, let's go with that. Um, yeah, that you see in Forbidden Lance, Forbidden Chalice, Forbidden Dress, and then she gets banished, and then she gets turned into a Lilith-like demon, and then she gets, uh, well, then. Then stuff happens, and then she gets re-sanctified, and now she's a good kid. Anyway, th there's a whole little line about that. I think I might have... Yeah, I posted it in the Discord server, in the Yu-Gi-Oh! channel some time ago. <sighs> but Kage Gigo, that's pretty cool, too. That one spans well over a decade. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Whale. Dark Warrior Digreffer also has something... has a line as well. Anyway. There we go. Tickle, tickle. Tickle the unicorn. Also known as tickle your belly. No. No? Okay. No. No tickling. Can you take a look at that, Evangeline? See that right over there? <laughs> no. Okay, I'm going to give her trust issues if I keep that up. <laughs> Let's not. Say we did. Never mind, YouTube doesn't allow it, but it was the video of Kaiba. Kaiba. Talking with Yugi about his future. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe not. Never asked the pharaoh possessing Yugi what he was doing in his time. What? What? Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Anyway, we'll catch you all later. Bye! I think it's been... Maybe, maybe long enough. Alright. So the way it's probably going to work out is that we're probably not going to do a stream tomorrow. Probably not. Because we're probably going to be over with her grandparents. A little bit. <laughs> As you do. Wait, here, let me... There we go. That way our, both of our microphones are picking the other up. So, yeah, we probably won't have a stream tomorrow, but if that's the case, I will be on myself afterwards. After sorry I about drop that. Her off. Yeah, sorry. sorry about that. That's okay. It gives us some time to hang out with him for a bit. That's good, right? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, my God. Um, it's like his name. Uh, Jotaro? Oh, the one that does it. Oh, Joseph. That was Joseph. Joseph. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Old Joseph. He's my favorite character. Or one of them, anyway. Not mine. Not, not yours? No, I know who yours is. You know all my favorite bad guys. I know your, I know her favorite character and her favorite bad guy. And whatever you're thinking, no, that's not who her favorite bad guy is. Should we tell them? You can tell them, sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, my favorite bad guy is Alessi. Alessi. Yes, Alessi. I'm going to chalk it up to the fact that she's eight and things are going over her head. Like, <laughs> the, the not-so-subtle undertones just look like silliness to a kid. Let's go with that. And your favorite character? Uh, Kakui. Oh, no, it's changed. Okay, good. Kakui. Uh, that works. It had been Jotaro. Now it's Kakui. That's a good choice. That's a good choice, too. What's your favorite bad guy and your favorite character? Favorite bad guy... Ooh, um, hmm. Uh, you know, I had an answer. I had an an had an had an answer. Hmm. 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 <laughs> they can't hear me do the silly. Well, they can barely hear me do the silly noises. Um. Hmm. It's tough. Uh, hmm. My bad guy has not changed, but my uh, favorite good guy has. Yeah. You know, I think it. I don't think it's Dio. I think that's that's the first thing that comes to mind. But mm, as much as I like Dio as a bad guy, I think I actually like Cars more. Cars? I don't, I, I don't remember Cars, if I ever yeah, you, saw him. you did. He's the black, curly-haired vampire that has that grows the wings eventually. And Joseph Joestar says, Well, wait a minute, there's one thing, one more thing we can do. Picks up the gem. Run away! That guy? Yep. Anyway. Um, anyway. We, we have to 
We have to watch more of that. Yeah. We have but to watch more. Right now, we are going to head out. Okay. Like we said that a couple minutes ago, a few minutes ago, a little bit. All right. Let's go. All right. Adios, amigos. Aww. Thank you. Adios. Bye bye. Bye bye. Adios, amigos.